Hey guys, uh, Type 40 here, or Super Circuit, or Aiden, and today I'm joined on the podcast by George, uh, if you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi there, I'm George Guidra. Hello everyone. Uh, George has done a lot of things. Uh, he does. He does a lot. Of, he does some cost. He does customizing for figures. He does a bit of cosplay. Um, he's one of the many doctor doctors on uh, DW twenty twelve. The it's a fan series on YouTube, and uh, we're just gonna have a chat today and just see how things go. So the first question I want to ask is, how have you been, mate? How's lockdown been? It, lockdown's been. It's been interesting because, uh, like I've, I mean, from the start, I've still had to be going to work because uh, uh, where I work, we take calls for all kinds of companies. A lot of them are medical related, so oh, I got okay. classed as like a kitty worker. So I've been going to work ever since like lockdown's been. But you know, it's been it's been okay. I've been keeping myself entertained as much as I can, and you know, just. Just buying my time till this is over. But what about you? How have you been finding it? Very good. Uh, very good. I've like I mean at the start of lockdown, I was I was still in college, like uni or whatever. I don't yes. know what you guys call it over there, but we call it college over here. But uh yeah, it's just been the, the last I think it was from March to June March to May, I was kind of just walking away on some college stuff, but now it's it's weird having some time to yourself. It's like I need to go out and get a job. <laughs> but, uh but no, it's it's sorry, it's, it's relaxing enough. I mean, I'm just doing what like yourself. I'm just trying to do just do different things like TikToks or animations or whatever. Oh, I'd, I'd love to give animations a go at some point. Uh, like I've seen some of the stuff you've done, and it's really really cool. Oh, thanks, man. It's it's actually like if you're doing something very short, it's very you yeah you have a lot of love and excitement for it. It's like it's like actually doing, you know, a fan film, but it's more, you have more kind of control in that sense because you, yeah. all you need is voice actors and sometimes it just has to be your voice with different modulations or whatever. So, But honestly, no, it's something I've always, I've always loved watching people do just stop motion and stuff in general has always interested me. It's why I'm a big fan of like Wallace and Gromit. Oh, yeah, Wallace and, Gr- yeah, Wallace and Gromit's actually, I think... I I feel bad that they've they've not made another one for a long time because like they made that last one with the what was it, it was with the kind of bakers. Oh killed. yeah, a matter of life and death. I think it was called. Yeah, I was like, Jesus, they've not made another one after all that time. It was like, uh but I think that's I think that's probably down to your man Peter Salas, is it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that he he's passed away. But um, no, I like. I think stop motion is a very like even though now I am trying to do more visual films and stuff, it's a very unique, unique technique or to pick up over filmmaking or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's there's so many different things you can do with it, and just like I've seen Marvel, Marvel stop motions, DC, DC stuff, um, anything like anything from different films. It's like it's just so wide and so much variety there. It's amazing. Exactly. Uh, like one thing I've seen quite a bit is because me being an anime fan uh, and I collect a lot of Dragon Ball Z figures, I've seen a lot of people do uh, Dragon Ball Z stop motions and some of them I, I sit there and I just can't even comprehend how long we've taken them to do half the stuff they've done to get half the shots. Oh yeah, because it's like what it is when you do it, it's you you don't call them shots, you call them frames. Yeah. So for for one man to just like move his arm forward it's like you think it's just like a b it's like it's like a b c d e f g like different loads of frames there that just make up one singular movement and it's oh it's insane when you when you actually put it all together in, in an editing software it's like what uh, the closest i've ever come to that is uh I, I remember this really well it was when i was first learning how to mask which is something i'm Still not the greatest at, but I had a go. I got that clip of Peter Capaldi saying that he was a doctor, and I decided, oh, let's put him like in a TARDIS background, mm-hmm. and having to literally go in frame by frame, remove the background from him. Oh my god! It took me, I think, two hours, maybe a little bit more, just to get. I think it was twenty seconds. Oh, that's 
I think what you did there was a little bit of rotoscoping as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it was. Oh my god, it was. It was an experience. Oh, but not like. Was that for? Was that for a YouTube video? Or... Uh, it was more just uh, at the time I had just gotten a new uh, software. I think it was Motion because Apple is well, it's an Apple software. They have a Motion FX, oh, yeah. and uh, it had a masking tool which. Uh, at the time, Final Cut didn't, so I bought the software to use it because it offered some more effects. Uh, and I decided to give it a go, and I thought, okay, let's try this because it was just Peter Capaldi standing out, uh, you know, against a plain wall, very minimal movement. So I thought, okay, it's a good test, and even for that simple stuff, yeah, there was there was a lot of work in it, but it, it was fun. It was good to kind of give that a go. Yeah, because no, I'll, I'll be honest, I, did, I have like over the years, I've seen your your YouTube stuff like your own stuff and it's it's very it's nice to see kind of a progression there you know you've you've definitely come a long way since then man thank you it's it's sort of the reason why because uh, a lot of my older stuff which i think a lot of people can uh you know they can relate to i i don't like a lot of my older stuff just because you know it's it's easy to look back and think i could do so much better now but uh the reason i like to keep it on my youtube page is because i just think you know it's a good way to see this is what it was now this is what it's become oh of course like i'm I'm there myself, like, because I've I've had stuff now on the channel for I think seven years. I've been on seven years on this channel now. I had I had other two ones, but on this main one, looking back in 2013, for example, it's like totally different way of doing things. Nowadays, it's camera, camera, like using a better editing software, not iMovie or something. It's like everything changes. You just get better. You know, you it's nice to look back and just see. I've done this. I'm still growing and going for for further, you know. No, I, I get that, and it, it is it is a good feeling. Like uh, my first ever fan film that I made uh, was shot with a broken camera, <laughs> uh, edited in iMovie, and I think it's it's something me and my friends joke about to this day. Uh, there's this shot where the I the cameraman and me both didn't realize because I didn't know he was going to pan across. I just thought I was just going to walk off. No, uh, he decides to pan across uh, the, the follow me. And we both didn't realize, oh, yeah, if you put a green screen element onto your like footage, it's going to move with the camera. So you just yeah. have me go to walk away and the TARDIS basically start to follow me. The TARDIS is just there like, don't leave me, don't leave me. <laughs> Literally, it, it was, oh, it was honestly, we, we cannot get over it to this day. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's something we, we do find quite funny, but... Every time I look back at that, I just think, how did I not notice this at all when I was editing it? <laughs> uh, but no, like, to be fair, you must have just, that, like, back then, it must have just been fun with friends. Like, you know, it always is, but it's just saying, it's just having a laugh with the lads or something, making a f- cool film together, you know? Oh, yeah, no, definitely. That's that's what it was. It was a case of just, uh, uh, to, to be fair, that film was basically improv uh, because it was supposed to, I'm really the only I'm the only actor in it uh, and like the whole robot assassin chasing me is that you just done for a POV shot so like with an electronic HUD to kind of show his vision uh, it, there was supposed to be another actor in there and he didn't turn up on the day and instead of thinking well let's uh, rearrange I went right now we're going to get to go to the woods we're going to film it and yeah to be fair it, it was a lot of fun it was freezing but it was it was a lot of fun yeah like uh, I think when you're able to do, when you're able to like have a laugh with a project, even though there are some complications, it's good because then you can look back and say, "Look, things didn't go a certain way, but we did have a laugh doing it, and it it came out. And it, at least it came out in some w- shape or form, anyway." No, exactly. Like at the end of the day, as much as I look back now, I do get a bit embarrassed by it. At the end of the day, it was still fun to do, and at the end of the day, I was just happy to get something out there. Of course, I mean. That's, that's how it is anyway. That's how it is sometimes today. Like, I mean, some people can put out stuff nowadays. Like, you know, it can be up to a better quality, but sometimes there might be a fault and you just have to take it as it comes, I guess. No, no, exactly. And I mean, having like worked with Luke uh, uh, when we were doing the DW 2012 stuff, that's something I definitely used to see because I know sometimes we'd have issues. Like uh, I remember at one point we were going to a location uh because i think i was helping him out with something we we're going to a location and he uh he had booked it but they had forgotten and closed early 
no. So, so instantly he was just like, okay, not to worry. And he found another location very, very quickly, uh, which was which was good. But it was that kind of thing just rolling with the punches because I think me and him are both under the belief you just got to try and make the best of a situation, just try and have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, uh, I can't stick with a project if I'm really not in not enjoying it. Mm. I think, like, to be fair, that's from what I'm hearing from that. That sounds like a very good way of kind of guerrilla filmmaking, where you're able to kind of you see, like, obviously, like I can imagine it's pretty bad when like you're you're about to go to a location and the location you want to go to is just shot. But like to be able to multi, like kind of go okay, assess the situation, and fix it within like I don't know space of whatever. I don't know. That, that just seems like a good like a good way to fix up something quickly like oh he did and, and like to be fair because obviously i i don't i don't live in birmingham so i don't know the birmingham area that well so uh yeah. that moment of very quickly i think it took like 10 minutes and instantly he was just like right okay we'll go here we'll do this here and we'll just shoot it at this point because it, it can still work so like m- mad respect to him he see he managed to get it working very quickly yeah i mean he's i mean yeah, I mean, you have to kind of give it to him. He has been doing it for a long, a long period of time. So he's definitely, I say, he's used to it by now. Would you say? From working I, with him, I, I think so. Yeah, like uh, he's he's quite good uh, on the fly. Like the thing is, having worked with him, he's he's very organised in what he wants to do. Uh, mm-hmm. So he'll say, okay, we need to get these scenes filmed at this point and this filmed at this point. Uh, but he is, I'll be fair here, he's quite open into letting me actor at least at least from like my, my experience with him when he's been like directing me he he sort of would just say you need to do this but he kind of let me give the performance so he let me make the performance decisions and then you know if i said oh can i do this again because this didn't work or i've accidentally pulled a switch off the tardis midway through a scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah that happened <laughs> I could, to be fair i could like I've seen, like, I've seen outtakes, like, I, from the casual viewer, I've seen the outtakes over the years, and it's just, that poor Tardis, it just takes, it, it just takes the pain. <laughs> like, no no wonder he's had to rebuild the thing a couple of times. It was, I, I, don't, I think it was, we were filming Eternal Darkness, and it's a bit when me and him are both working at the console, and it's supposed to be like, really urgent, really hit this, hit that, and I went to hit a switch, and it just came off in my hand, and you hear the highest pitch scream come from me uh because i was like there's no way i can hide this i'm just gonna have to make a blooper out of this and he sort of looked at me for a second and went how did that noise come out of you and i just went i don't know but i may have accidentally pulled the switch off (laughs) (laughs) oh like to be fair that like i was actually when i saw like because i've obviously seen your stuff over years i was just when i saw you in the trailer for like the series and obviously for that that particular episode i was surprised i was like oh dab that oh, george is in this that, you know i was just like this is cool this is cool you know that was it it was it, like that was weird i like i because obviously I'm, I'm i knew him i knew meg i knew dominic so you know there's always been kind of talks about me being involved before like i remember uh a very 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 old draft of dom's first episode that was uh completely different to what uh his first episode ended up being because i remember it involved ice warriors and stuff and to be fair it was a really good script but you know scripts change uh, i was going to be one of the side characters in it and i was like okay cool and then just I remember bumping into Luke one day at a convention. I went to go congratulate him on, like, I think, I don't know what episode had come out at this point, but one of his episodes had come out. So I went to go talk to him and Meg just to say hi. And then he, and at this point, I'd known him. We'd spoken a bit, but I hadn't known him that well at this point. And he kind of looked at me and went, oh, yeah, fun fact, you were in the running. If Dominic hadn't been cast, it could have been you. And I was, like, really confused. Like, (laughs) okay, what? (laughs) You were were just like, wait, 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 wait. (laughs) Oh, that was it. He kind of went, oh, you know, we'll have to get you involved one day. And I was just like, oh, okay. Then about a month later, he just texted me saying, are you still up for being involved? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Thinking, oh, it'll be, it'll be, be a little role or something, which I'd be fine with. You know, I, I like acting, so it'd be fun. And he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, how would you like to be the past doctor? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Your eyes just widened when you saw the text. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was it. I was just like, is, is, this, is this happening? Uh, okay. Uh, to be fair though, it was look as I know it, it was probably a surprise to you. Like I think everybody just went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but it was a 
I'll be honest, man. It was late. It was very nice. You did very good in that. In that episode. Oh, thank you. I don't know. It was. It was just like you know. I mean, obviously, we don't know. Like from that point of view, we knew nothing else about your version of the Doctor other than that episode. So what you did for that amount of time was pretty good. And obviously, when you have, <laughs> it's like to have you know when you have Luke and you have Dan in the in the same episode as well. It's like. And also, however many other doctors were 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 running around at that point, it was very it was very good. Like. Oh no, it was it was a lot of fun, and honestly, the, the reception I got meant a lot to me because, like, I, I felt happy with what I did. Uh, but you know, I thought, right, you have like the ones who'd been it for a while, like Dom. Everyone wanted more Dom, and rightfully so. Like, he's absolutely great, and oh, yeah. you know, people were excited for you know Luke and stuff, and the bit of extra Dan, especially when they announced like Velocity was going to be in it, and that was like that was brilliant to me. I was just there filming with him one day and he announced he went to me oh yeah velocities in this and i was like wait are you telling me i'm in a fan film with velocity i was like oh my god that's so cool uh so then afterwards to, for the blonde doctor to get a positive reception like that it honestly did mean a lot to me yeah because like i remember like obviously when it was kind of the same i guess it was kind of the same reaction everyone got when dom was announced as the doctor like because dom I remember that when I remember that episode, just watching it and just getting the phone call scene at the end, where he shows where he turns around and you see who it is. I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> oh, but when I see it, but it, it's, it was like, and then seeing like the lovely audi- like the audience reaction to it and all this stuff, and then when your one came, it was. Like, I mean, I saw the Delta the Delta FX um, live stream recently. Ah, uh, yes. And it was with Luke, and I remember I just threw in a comment with everybody else, just saying the same thing: "Blonde doctors." <laughs> it's become, I'm sorry. There's a. I heard there's a meme page to like that, like where somebody's actually used that as a caption. There is. I've, I I follow it, and I even I even for a laugh just threw in a meme because I just thought let's join in. But I think my favorite one is uh, it's the meme of a Dom running out the house with Meg and uh, Ben Walden like following following him, and it just and someone just captioned it when you've only have one episode out, but everyone already wants a, a series about the blonde one. <laughs> I mean, you just like Dom, like that that picture. I think I've seen it. It's like Dom's literally just legging it, and Meg, <laughs> Meg is trying to catch. And then, like, what's his name? Um, like Tommy. What's who plays Tommy again? Uh, ben Walden. Yeah, Ben Walden's over there with just the biscuits. Just like I'll catch up with you. I just need to finish the biscuits. <laughs> I mean, the man's got his priorities straight. I can't blame him. I'd be the same. Oh, if, if you give me some bourbons or like custard creams, I'm complete. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm not chasing him. <laughs> Same custard creams. Hit me with a custard cream. I'm good. Oh. But I think it's it's quite it's quite funny when everyone is uh, asking for a blonde doctor series. Which, like, I'll, I'll be honest. Me, me and Luke have discussed it, so it's not it's not out of the picture. I just think you know with series five and stuff going on at the moment. It's, yeah, and the, re- uh, and the remastered stuff as well. It's... Yeah, exactly. And you know, the last thing they need is. Uh, Another big project, I know. Exactly. So, you know, I, I will wait patiently. And if the time comes, the time comes. Like, me and Luke, uh, we did discuss, because obviously I'm planning to do my own fan films, and I did talk with Luke about uh, making it a Blonde Doctor series so it can connect in. And then we were talking about some of the ideas that I want to do and some ideas he had, and we sort of came to the conclusion that a lot of them wouldn't mix well like they were all good ideas from both sides it was just a case of they wouldn't mix together and it was because we both didn't want to have to you know jump in on someone else's idea so if something with a blonde doctor happens that will be separate to like luke's channel and which i'm happy about because you know i think that's the channel where he came from so i'm more than happy with that and any future like dot two projects i'm gonna do uh on my channel are separate like a separate continuity oh that's, yeah that's fine like that, that works. That to be fair, that works for yourself because you're allowed to express those other those other ideas that you have. You know, and that was it. Because like, I'll be fair to him. Like we, we we did talk about it, and we did try and you know think of ways it could work. But uh, like I would have introduced uh, some of the doctors and stuff, and you know when we when we spoke about it, it would have made like the 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 timeline a little bit messy, and we were like. We didn't really want to do that, especially because, like, even as Luke said, right now he's got it very organized in a way he quite likes it. So I thought, you know, I'm quite happy with it at the moment. I think it's also fun then because it gives me a chance to make a different Doctor than the blonde Doctor. So it gives me a chance to make, you know, two different versions of the character. Oh, yeah. And, like, to be fair, that gives you a load of space to, like, 
you know, try different things. Maybe, I mean, with one doctor, you can do one, like act a certain way, but then with the other, you can throw in different bits and bobs. Like, you know, I guess it's, a, it's always different, really. I guess it's the same, really, like with some other act, you know, some other people who've had to play the doctor in a different way. When they cut, if you know, if say they played the doc, a fan from Doctors played is, I don't know, I'm, I'm off on a tangent. No, no, I get what you mean because I remember, uh, oh, I think, I think it was an old fan called Doctor Who Generations. I know Dom Dominic played the Doctor in that before, obviously, being the Purple oh, Doctor. Yeah, did, yeah. So, you know, you and obviously in Doctor Who Remnants, uh, his audio series, I you get the odd little introduction with the Doctor, which I was talking to him about the other day, and he says, Oh, no, it's not the Purple Doctor, it is a separate. Doctor, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. Mm. And I think, I guess, I guess when you're allowed to play another Doctor, it sort of works in your favour. Because I know, I think years ago now, and I think uh, over to Audios, he's only released, um, he's only released recently the visual cut of yeah. the, yeah, and in that, like, obviously he plays a different Doctor to his own one that he he's doing now, and so does. Dan, who you know, fractured timeline, all that stuff. Mm. So it's lovely to see that you know you guys can go do that, and then later on when you come back and actually play a newer version, you're able to kind of I don't know take bits of the old one and adapt it. Or yeah, exactly. It's a good way to kind of a uh, thing. This is one thing I did with the character, and this is another thing. And like I said, I'll give like full full credit to Luke here. He he did want to try and think of a way, you know, to make it work. But we just had these different ideas, and it was a case of we thought it'd be unfair to both parties if we said, well, doing this would mean we'd have to not do this idea, but then that was mean we couldn't do this idea as well. So, mm. you know, just to, you know, so we thought, you know, to be fair, yeah. But I mean, hopefully, you know. When obviously there's a bit more free time, and also we're allowed to go out again. Uh, oh yeah, we're, we're you know we might get some more blondie. Uh, I'm, I'm I mean, uh, it was quite fun to be uh, to be asked to come back and do that short tale. That was quite fun. Oh, that was I'm gonna be honest. That was the, like I I think that definitely was kind of one of the top ones. Like I definitely will say like the one that I guess Meg like Meg did, and the one that Dom like. Meg's one was very for me. I thought that was crazy. The whole like the way she was kind of reacting to the regeneration and stuff. Yeah, I thought that was a very good character piece. Very taught out, you know, a lot of drama and how she, you know, and how her character is actually feeling following the whole incident, you know. Uh, but then when I saw yours, it was it felt like a nice kind of fun tale. It reminded me of I've been recently listening to the Eight Doctor audios with. Charlie Pollard. Oh, I love them. I so absolutely me, adore them. So for me, it was like it kind of felt like that a little bit. It was like, oh, this is something like what the eight. This is a little, you know, it was a little bit similar to that, and it was like, you know, it was just fun. You know, it just seemed like good, good fun. And the little joke at the end, I will give you full credit. Like I gotta ask, was that you or was that Luke? <laughs> that that was completely me. Everything. Uh, the like Luke saw the script before I recorded it because I wanted to make sure that it was okay, but. Uh, it, so it came about because I, because uh, when Luke told me the idea, he had sent me his story as an example, just to go and give a feel of what he's doing. And then uh, Dom, like Dominic had also showed me his because he was designing the cover art. So he said, oh, do you want to take a look at mine? I went, oh, I'd love to. And I realized they were quite, quite serious stories because I know like, uh, Obviously, Luke's one is the Doctor, like, during the whole regeneration the, the scene. Tar- the TARDIS is literally collapsing into itself. Mm, exactly, um, which I thought was a really nice little touch, because, it, because like, when I see How Time Flies now, and I remember that audio, it, it does add a lot to it. Uh, and obviously, Luke's one, sorry, not Luke's, uh, Dominic's one <laughs> was uh, quite, you know, self-reflective about, like, uh, the, doc- like the Purple Doctor and stuff. And I sort of realised, I want to do something a bit light-hearted, because you obviously have the blonde doctor in the dramatic setting of eternal darkness, you know, fighting the Valley So I thought let's just have a nice little silly story where he can just be the doctor. And I do love how everyone's reaction was just like, of course his first like story is called haircuts. <laughs> uh, I do like, I mean, it's fair. You look at, you know, like, no offense. It's like when you look at your hair, you're just like, would that need a haircut? <laughs> Oh, right now it does. Trust me, right, right now it does. It's like you've taken the blonde doctor and turned his hair up to ten. <laughs> you, you and the, it's like your doctor and the eighth doctor could have like a, a hair off with the, with like, with like Tom Baker and like John Pertwee. <laughs> I, I think to be fair, I saw a picture recently on Dominic's Instagram of 
him dressed as David Tennant. And oh my, oh my god. god, his afro! I looked at that and went, "Oh my god, I think I'm beaten." It's. I, I was looking at that. I was like, "Jesus, the man is lit!" Like I was there looking at that, and I instantly got Tom Baker season eighteen vibes. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I, oh really, I really wanted to message him and say, hey, get into the costume, but I kind of was like, it's so hot right now. I could not ask that upon the poor man. Oh, I, I don't think anyone wants to get into their, like, Doctor Who, like, their Doctor costumes, because it's just, like, it will, you will literally die from the heat. Like, if any heat, even if it's raining, it's probably still warm. <laughs> oh, I made the big mistake. The other day, I, I decided, I, I think, not the other day, last week, I decided, oh, I'm going to film something in my Dark Eyes cosplay for TikTok. Yeah, oh. putting, putting on a thick leather jacket was a big mistake very quickly. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw the one you did where you had the kind of, you were kind of going for the old frock, the frock kind of course yeah. kind of one. I was like, he must be dying in that. He must, it's like, there's there's no way. There's no way you can. Like, that coat looks heavy. <laughs> Oh, honestly, and um, the worst thing is uh, when I order that coat, there's a slight issue with one of the buttonholes where it's a bit too small, so I can't ever get the button out without a lot of force. So I was just stuck in the leather jacket for about half an hour just trying to get out of it. Oh, Jesus. That's like being stuck in a, in a microwave. <laughs> oh. But then... Yeah, no, like I, I do think like it is in like it is interesting hearing all that about you know how much like it's so it really does sound like you guys have a, a lot of fun doing that stuff and just making just making stories and just having a laugh with it, you know. I think that's it because you know uh, I I I'd love to play like the Doctor on TV. Don't know if it's ever going to happen. So getting this opportunity, uh, just to play it in general is just a lot of fun and. Like, like I said, I, I very much expected to come in as a kind of like one and done thing, you know, here, here's of this course. past doctor and stuff. And I was like, I, I'd be happy with that. But, you know, to get this positive reception and the fact people want a Blonde Doctor series is it, it really does mean a lot. Yeah. And like I I'm like for me, I kind of look at that and they say that's nice. You know, it's nice to see that people are, you know, again, as I said before, people are giving you a good reaction back and they they do, like, you wouldn't expect it, but when they do come in and say, oh, we, we do want to see a nice a series, it's like, damn, Jesus, I left the mark. I, I think it was the moment uh, I was talking to someone uh, and they, uh, they, they've made this, like, little sequence of, like, all the, like, at least new series doctors going, oh, I'm the Doctor, I'm the Doctor, and all this stuff. And then I was just like, oh, that's really cool. Then suddenly faded to me, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> And I, I messaged him and said, oh, that's a really cool video. And they went, oh, yeah, I consider you can. And I was like, wait, what? Okay, thank you. Jeez. No, like, I, like, from a guy, like, for me now, who's a guy who is, made, like, he's trying to make his own doctor. I, you might have seen the Burgundy Doctor or whatever he's Oh, called, I, or... I love the Burgundy Doctor. I love that outfit. Yeah, it's basically, right? I was, I'll give you a little background to that. I was on a night out with the lads, and I had that all that on. And I literally looked at it, and I went, this could literally be my Doctor Who costume, like, because I had the, I have these like shoes I got from like Oasis, uh, not Oasis, is it Oasis? No, it's TK Maxx. I got it from. Yeah, and I was like, this looks like something the Doctor would wear, you know, if he if he got to like, I don't know, tw- twenty thousand years old or something, and he just thought, I just want to wear something casual. <laughs> I I was I was gonna say so being half Irish and uh, having uh, like my dad being very Irish when he wants to be. Uh, I think the funniest moment for me was just uh, when I saw that outfit, and I remember you put in you you kind of got some Eccleston vibes from it. My mind went, yeah, I could see I could see a very Irish doctor being like, like going, nah, I cannot be bothered to go all elaborate. I'm just going to be comfortable. Oh yeah, like I really, I look at like obviously I'm not the I'm not the first Irish doctor. There is obviously of course Dan's version. Like, mm. but when I look at this, I'm like, we both kind of got that a little. You know, we're both very like just casual going this is the very irish thing of we don't really we're not trying to make too much of a fuss but yeah but uh no i i do like the costume i hopefully know it might come out visually one day but uh i mean right I'd, now, I'd love to see that i'd be more than happy to see that at some point yeah i mean i've got a um, i've recently gotten a sony a7 camera so it's like the like i'm hopefully going to be if i can get the set done i might make a um kind of a small prequel showing the sort of beginning of his life and Ooh. 
That'd be cool. Yeah, it's not. It's not anything. Still, it's something, and it's it's one. Of, it's it was one of the big reasons I I love like fan films and fan audios in general. So I love the idea of people seeing like their own doctor. So when that when that stain in the TARDIS thing was really popular, and there was you know design your own doctor, it was so cool for me seeing all these other people's interpretations. Oh yeah, and like with me, like that kind of like that version, like that, like when I saw other people, I was like, damn, this is like this is cool that people actually do like art. Like when I saw, like especially you no, know, because obviously I think with Jodie with the current Joe Martin with what they've done is like they've they really allowed more people to like more people, especially women, to come out and just do their own version of the Doctor. It's like. I love this. You know, it's like they're so much more stylish than mine, and I love it. <laughs> oh, but I, I get what you're saying about like uh, Joe Mars and Jodie Whittaker, like bringing more people into it, which I think I think is great because I think when you go online, all you ever see is sort of like the the negative stuff uh, uh, of people like either saying that they don't like the castings or something. But the fact then I get to see a lot of these people saying oh, my daughter now got into Doctor Who because the Doctor's now a woman and it was really cool for her to see like this woman saving the day and I think that's great. I love the fact it's it's inspiring people. Yeah, I mean, I just saw this morning um, Dom, like, what is it, Dom put up a tweet saying that his two, I think his nieces were there, they really loved Jodie's Doctor and I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Like, that is, it's lovely to see that, you know, more people, especially young girls obviously because of the new doctor it's like they're all coming they're coming in because they love this version and it's like it, it's kind of it's kind of like tenant in a way but it's like we're having a rebirth a little bit it is it is actually and I, I do get what you're saying and i think it also quite works because both 10 and 13 are very happy doctors when um, for most of the time which i think is quite good but what i exactly it's brilliant because uh like obviously, I've I've met a lot of people before who were worried about cosplaying like the Doctor because of like uh, a gender or like the color of their skin or something. And yeah. the fact that that fear's now gone for them is brilliant. It's like they they're finally seeing the Doctor can be anything, and if you want, you can be the Doctor. Yeah, I mean, like the Doctor, like Doctor Who is so open now that like I remember literally was the I think it was twenty eighteen. I was at. Con and I actually ran into Luke and Meg there. Like I saw that, like I saw him going. Oh, I just wanted. To, I went over to say hi. Yeah. And literally, Luke was fully. He was. He was wearing the thirteenth Doctor costume, and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> it's like damn. <laughs> I I think the biggest moment of shock is for me was when uh, and it was a great moment when I would see people like before the episode aired, even like cosplaying Jodie in her outfit. Or like uh, her in like Capaldi's outfit, and but the one thing I did come to re- the realization of with my hair, does that mean every time I've ever cosplayed Capaldi, I'm just cosplaying post Regeneration Thirteen? <laughs> well, just rip up the costume a little bit and just ta- get the Sonic, get the uh, the new the Turkey Doctor Sonic, and talk with a Nor- Yorkshire accent, and there you go. <laughs> It could be done. I do have a lot of friends from the area. I'll just go spend a lot of time with them and start and just say, look, just talk. I'm just going to pick up your accent. <laughs> Uh not to be fair, that that would be that would be good. I mean with me no, I, I can actually kinda do an eleventh eleventh doctor accent. It's just very it's very weird. <laughs> uh, I I f oh the most... I mean it's no Jacob Don Dugman or I can't I can't pronounce the last <laughs> but it's you know, it's kinda like Hello, I'm the doctor and I, I do things. I I love I love uh, jelly I do you know jelly baby or so uh, a bit of a a bit of a reveal here, a bit of an exclusive here. Uh, when I used to work in uh, when I used to work in retail, I once served a customer talking like Matt Smith the entire time I was serving <laughs> them. I was like, right, yes, hello, what do you want? Oh, you want to buy this paint? Okay, let me just scan that. Right, do you have ID? Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, perfect. Okay, that will come to eleven ninety nine. That's a good number, eleven ninety nine. Do you have any? Oh, you can pay by card. Okay, that's great. Okay, and here's your receipt. <laughs> right, have a lovely day now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine it's just the look <laughs> they, they they were fine I think they genuinely just thought that was how I spoke it, it, I think it, it was something I would get into a habit of doing because at the time I just found doing a Matt Smith impression quite funny uh, like I remember once when I was uh, I was in I was in back when I was in school uh, I was helping set up for this like 
live stream thing or this like festival they were putting on because it was like a film and television uh, school I went to for my uh, sixth form years and uh, we lost first of all, so we lost one of the teachers that we really need to find so me and my friend at the time we were running around the school and just to keep like me distracted because it's two big buildings so I'm running around and I keep talking in the Matt Smith was going right yes we have to find her I don't know what would happen to her. Who knows? It could be anywhere. We need to find it. Then we need to get the film cameras because film cameras are cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, imagine if you did it in the Tom Baker. Tom Baker was like, Come along now, K9. Back to the TARDIS. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome, <laughs> 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 Hello, welcome to Hobbycraft. Hello, welcome to Hobbycraft. You have a discount card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it'll be 10 99 Oh, I remember the year 1999. Paul McGann, yes. Uh, uh, he was a doctor. He only had one movie, but he was a splendid chap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, I swear, like, if I ever had the chance to do like an impression in front of somebody, that would be just hilarious. <laughs> oh, I, I think one of my favourite videos is Christopher Thompson doing his Peter Capaldi impression to Peter Capaldi. Oh, yeah. And then Pe- I think Peter just had, like, he had the, you know what, you know Peter's shocked when, like, his eyebrows just raised for, like, a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, it was, it was such a great moment. It was just like, oh, damn, this guy could do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, like, you're just wondering what happens if, like, you know, was it Matt Smith made, met that man, Jacob Dunman, like, who did, who did his voice or David Tennant or someone like that. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know if you find this, but uh, my my friend Michael Seeger, who he is, so his his most well known cosplay. Is oh, I've cosplay. seen his I've seen his cosplays on TikTok. Actually, I think I follow him. Mm, and uh, we were talking about this the other day because obviously he tends to signature cosplay. But the one thing we can never properly do is a David Tennant impression. We both said we can get the mannerisms down of how he speaks, but none of us can even tr- get close to doing his voice. Is yeah, it... it's more. It's a very kind of like I've discovered tends like you know more from The Simpsons. Yeah, it's very kind of gra- <laughs> very gra- very gravelly. It's like, well, I mean, you got to talk a little bit like you know, the whole world is falling apart, and I just need to get to the TARDIS. I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot better than I've ever done. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very like I, I, I'll actually tell you, it's so stressing on the vo- Like I've done a couple of impressions over the years, and literally this is the one that nearly destroys my lungs <laughs> or my vocal cords. I'm there just trying to go. Well done. I think you and me might need to uh, go stop the adipose or something like that. Uh, I think the one that's killed my voice is I had to do it recently uh, for a mate. It was a John Hurt voice. And oh my god, uh, doing <laughs> talking like this the entire time while still having to try the moat, it destroyed my throat by the end of it. What you did, you did in the name of the doctor, you did without choice, <laughs> <laughs> but with reward. <laughs> oh, so sometimes I wish if I still worked in retail, I sometimes wish I should serve someone in a John Hurt voice. <laughs> <laughs> what you bought. You bought without choice. In the name of peace, but not in the name of your club membership. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh that would be, I think that would be just hilarious. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just imagining now, like, one of the doctors, if someone just did a skit where, like, you put one, of, like, if you took Tom Baker out of retirement and just put him in retail. <laughs> Paul oh, McCann or someone, or like David Tennant, and he's just dressed up in the full tent doctor gear with the 3D glass. <laughs> and he's like, there's, vo- there's void stuff all around you. Oh, I mean, t- to be fair, the closest I've, I've ever had to do to that is when you walk into any like shop dressed in cosplay casually, because that's happened to me a couple of times. I think once one of my old jobs had a day where you had to come in dressed up because yeah. uh, it was like for a charity and I was like yeah that's fine so yeah I'm there dressed as a doctor so so it was quite funny when people would go oh do you work here and I'm thinking I can tell and I can see why you'd wonder that <laughs> uh, which uh, which doctor was it was it 11 or 10 or I think at the time I was just trying to go for because it, it was trying to go for one that was really well known so I went for a because I didn't have a lot of the stuff at the time I just went for a very quick fourth doctor cosplay because I, still, oh, right. because I still had to wear bits of my uniform and I was like, right, I'm not throwing on a jacket over the jumper they have to make us wear for the uniform. So it was like a jumper, uh, the hat, the big floppy scarf and stuff. So that, 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 got, that got a reaction, which was quite fun. 
No, oh, no, that's that's pretty good, Lee. I mean, yeah, to be fair, you could have just tried. I mean, if you wanted to, you just try on a Cyberman mask, like Cyberman mask, and just walk, <laughs> just walk around. You won't be deleted, but I need twenty quid. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if a customer ever would try to act up on me that day, that would have been great. Just having a Cyberman mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just be there, like you just sulk and you just put your head down. <laughs> just oh. hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to talk with you again. <laughs> uh, to be right. fair, I'll give it to you though. Like your your cosplay has been very good. Like I've been watching it recently. It's just it's been doing really well. And like especially with TikTok and stuff, like you seem to just really enjoy it, man. No, I do. I've I I do have a lot of fun cosplaying because it's just I think it's a fun distraction. And the thing is, like Doctor Who has influenced my style to a degree anyway. So I do wear a lot of like the long coats and stuff. Uh, so it's so a lot of the stuff I buy just goes into what I wear. And if things like uh, Spider Man, like Spider Man, was my reason to lose weight. It was a good motivation, and I mean it, it does make me happy. So uh, for Chris, for last Christmas. Uh, my one of my best friends his his kid loved superheroes so i went up to his dressed as spider-man to give him some presents uh because I, I was saying oh santa's a bit busy at the moment so he sent me and i got him, like a little mini spider-man suit and he spent the entire day running around in it oh on me i like that's that's lovely because like i remember i did that kind of for my cup my cup was in my cousin's um birthday recently back in february and like i, I was dressed up as like the Raimi spider-man Oh, but my co- but what happened was my cousin had seen me a couple of months prior in that costume, so my mom said to me, "Yeah, Aiden, that's that's his that's his Spider Man now, like that version that you showed up as." You know, oh. he'll only know it. So I'm like, oh, and I like you. You might see it on my Instagram. There's a picture of me swinging through the city or something with him. And it's like I that's him then with the the kind of Captain America mask on. It's like. That's nice. It was a good, like, it feels good. Like, I know you, I know from yourself, like, doing that, it's like, you must, it, it's a great feeling to do that for a kid, like, to show up as their hero and, you know, even even give them a Spider Man suit or something and have them run around with you. And it, it was, honestly. And I think because uh, it, it, it was quite a funny moment because, uh, obviously, so because uh, I'm very close with his dad, uh, he calls me Uncle George. So the plan was going to be, uh, I was going to go and dress as Spider-Man, then pretend to leave as Spider-Man, then quickly get changed back into me. Uh, so I quickly went to hide in my mate's bathroom where he couldn't like, <laughs> so, so his kid couldn't see me. And we both, and suddenly he leaves the bathroom and we both come to horrible realization. I can't reach the zipper on my back and get it all the way down properly. I needed him there. And he was in the other room. I'm just there desperately trying to text him. And you know the trouble you're, Green phone with the Spider Man suit on oh, is an absolute okay. nightmare. And I'm like, get to the bathroom right now. You need to unzip this right now. <laughs> I think, I think, like, the best advice I can give you is you let you use your other finger to put literally pull the fabric down so far that, like, it the screen recognizes that it's a finger poking it. <laughs> oh, it's it's the tough, it's tough, man. I swear, I want, like, I know you're, I know you're paying. <laughs> I it, I think it was hilarious because then when he eventually came into the bathroom because he was like, oh, dad needs to go to the toilet for a second, comes to the bathroom and he's like, you all right? I'm just like desperately reaching at my back saying, get the zip, get the zip. <laughs> uh, oh, I, no, I, the, zip, the zipper is the worst thing I swear to my, like I definitely, if I do get another one, I have to get a U zipper, like not a, not a straight is down zipper, like one of those U ones because then you can get it off easy. <laughs> See, I've I usually use the user for I don't use the uh, the up and down one. I had a bad experience with a user for once, but I think that's just more down to the quality of the suit because uh, I got a it was the old uh, far from home suit I got, and it was it looked gorgeous, but the issue was uh, yeah they hadn't made it right. It wasn't to the size they had said they'd made it to, so it was absolutely awful to get on to get on, and the use it wasn't helping. So I was just like, yeah, no, I'm just going to go get another one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, look, a, a sacrifice needed to be made. <laughs> exactly. If I wanted to get the soul stone, I had to make a sacrifice, and that suit was the sacrifice. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I like to. And one thing about back, like back to the fitness part, like I completely get understand where you're coming from because I when I saw your weight loss, so like I knew I had that experience myself. Like I, I lost a lot of weight just to get that into that Spider Man suit. But like looking at your journey where you went, I was like. 
Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That was a great like yeah. fair play to you, man. Like you've come a you've come a long way, like. No, thank you. No. And I remember, I think, ages ago, I, I remember you you posted something about, like, how your weight has changed. And I was like, oh, wow, because I'd only known you, like, I'd seen you as, like, as you've looked now. So I never even knew you'd gone through that. So when I like, saw the pictures, I was like, damn, well done, lad. Yeah, I know, because I, I remember, what was it? I'd, like, I think a lot of new people who see me, like, yeah, on tw- maybe on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever, they, they've only seen me as I am now, because... I think back in the day, I just never posted anything with me in the shot. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, because I was very self conscious. But now it's like, now that I've kind of, I guess, I've gotten more in shape and stuff, it's like, I kind of feel like now I can properly do something. Like, I what, like, that's why I never did a fan film or any audio or thing or like that. Cause I just didn't, <laughs> I just never felt comfortable putting up my, uh, my kind of face or stuff like that, you know? No, I, I understand that completely. Cause that, that was a, for a while uh why i stopped uploading if i did upload i wasn't really in the project i was more like on the directing side of things just because yeah at the time i just felt more comfortable not being in front of the camera so losing the weight was a big confidence boost for me yeah i think and for me like i definitely say like it's boosted my confidence more to play the doc like play the doctor that kind of character more because it's like in the like in the beginning i remember i was literally just going to be the doctor that regenerates into the next one yeah so like i i would have been the past doctor and it's like now i'm like okay now i can be the doctor i don't need to i don't need i don't need, like it, there's somebody else can be there but like i can be my own doctor properly like i feel because i feel comfortable with myself and again no, exactly i guess you might uh, you might feel that yourself i don't i don't know like, but no I, I i get that it's that really positive moment thinking yeah i i can do this uh because uh when the turn of darkness first came out i was quite nervous just about because i was watching it on my tv and i was just like i'm about to have to spend nearly an hour and a half looking at my face and when it came out i was like oh wow this is actually okay and i was it really was a nice little confidence boost so yeah playing that sort of character it really did help oh yeah and like i'll be like when i see you like to see all of you being able to like you know obviously you're in a graveyard so it's already a bit a bit weird but like to see you guys being able to like you're in this surrounding and you'll be able to kind of you adapted to what you did what you had to do and you played the roles to what they were you know properly and whatever it's like you just did a you just did a wonderful job that's all i can say honestly thank you that does mean a lot and going back to the graveyard thing I'm, i gotta be honest that wasn't the weirdest experience i've had filming in the graveyard it was for uh, a friend's school project or like his a-level project or something and he said to me i really need you to act in this film for me and i went yeah no, that's fine and he said okay we're gonna go to the graveyard near where we live because we lived quite close at the time uh and we go to film he says oh yeah just uh kneel by that grave and act against that grave and i was like okay okay fine i'll do that <laughs> and i looked at the grave it just said rest in peace george and i was like wait what the hell <laughs> is it you're just like is he digging my grave here or something <laughs> oh it's just like does he have a hammer is, is this a setup <laughs> <laughs> it's like how well do i know this guy <laughs> um... <laughs> i was just looking at the dates like does it say today's date <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I've ne- I, like, to, i'll be honest i've never had that like but i, I Honestly, that, that I can imagine that would have must have been like just a surreal experience. Too. You're just like, hmm. <laughs> it was, and I think what was through afterwards is we had to go outside the police station where we live to uh, film a shot where they pretend like they're dragging me in, uh, and I had thought they had got permission. They hadn't because they were still outside the police station going, "Oh, what do we do? What do we do?" And I sort of looked over and went, "Wait, you haven't got permission?" They were like, "No," and I went. So you're just going to randomly be dragging me to the front doors of a police station where they can see me. <laughs> it's like, this doesn't look sketchy at all. Of course not. <laughs> Especially because they went to me. I had to like, put on a, like, a suit, look really kind of like dirtied up a little bit because I think the whole thing was I was depressed so I got like really drunk the night before in this scene or something. I don't know, but literally. So I'm like, yeah, you're really not helping my image right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, like, 
To be fair, man, that's just that's how acting goes, man. <laughs> oh, don't. I, I I do get that. I my uh, I remember once. Uh, it, it's, it's weird. I do have these. I have these random stories. It was honestly a case of my friend was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go film in public. You need to be a news reporter, like giving a story." I'm like, "Okay." I hadn't seen the lines until we get there, and he went, "Okay, you're reporting a murder." So I'm stood in a public area when it's absolutely packed, going, "The recent murders that have occurred," and I could just see people looking at me like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like, oh, like I remember. I actually have a joke of a story myself. Where like I was, was it me and the, me and my friends were like in the woods one time. And we were pretend we were trying to film a horror film kind of thing back in the day. You know where you, you yeah, you try and do something with your mates. And literally, like I we, I think it was myself and one of us said to one guy, "Look, man, can you roll down this hill? Like you kind of pretend to fall down this hill and die or whatever." <laughs> and he he decides to like when we told him, all right. Roll safely. So what he did was lobbed himself down the hill onto <laughs> onto some really hard rocks or stones. And later on, he's there to us, lads, my back is all <laughs> bruised up and whatever. We're like, well, we told you roll safely. And he's like, you didn't. I was like, oh, for sake. <laughs> oh, I can literally just picture that moment of just like you being, okay, now be safe. Just, just do the safely. Next minute, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to be fair, in film, like in filmmaking, you're just like you make sure you tell them everything before they do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, have you ever, have you ever had any like close to like you know close calls? I would say on uh, when you're filming something with anybody. Not. I'm, I mean, <laughs> when you ripped I mean, the switch off the terrorist console. That, that was... I mean, that that was that. But that was what. Uh... Not so much where someone's got injured. There was a time I had to do multiple takes of slapping my friend in the face. Oh, uh, uh, but it was it, it wasn't so much an incident. It was it was the moment of the guy didn't tell me he brought this. So it, we were filming a very long abandoned Doctor Who fan film, which never saw the light of day, and I'm kind of glad about it. Uh, <laughs> and we because we never finished it. Uh, we go to film it, and my mate playing the doctor, which one made me laugh because the top half was really doctory, but then he decided to wear shorts, and I was like, oh. okay, I was, I was like, doctor showing off some leg. Okay, I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go with it. We'll roll with it. Uh, and as we're filming, uh, he's going through his bag just to get like a drink out and oh, get yeah, like yeah. some like, screwdriver, and he suddenly he pulls out a knife, oh, and my. I go to him, I go to him, why do you have a knife? Because he did food text. So I thought was it related to that, and he went. For protection, I went. We're stood in the middle of a bloody public field. What are you trying to do? <laughs> and the the scariest moment is afterwards. Like uh, we get filming, we said we'll leave it there for today because I wanted to do some things and we'll come back like next week. Next minute, he as we're walking, he goes to reach for his drink. He goes, George. I go, what? He goes, I've lost a knife. I went, you did what? He went, I've lost a knife. I went. <laughs> Do you know the amount of people who go over that area? You've lost that knife. I went, why did you bring the knife? <laughs> he was just like, you know, for protection, I went, what are you going to be attacked by? A fluffy dog that's coming up to you. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it would be one of those things where it's just like, what are you going to be attacked by? A derelict? An imaginary derelict? All right. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I just, I honestly, it was the one moment I went, Oh god, I was actually just like, I have no clue how to react to this because he just randomly pulls out a knife, and I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I mean, there was the time during my A levels we had. I'm convinced we've traumatized a group of school children. Oh. So <laughs> it starts off a bit similar to yours. We were in the woods making a horror film. Oh, of course, <laughs> uh, for our project, and my, me, and my friends were directing it. Now, my friend, uh, she is one of the most She's a really talented director. She's even teaching film at the moment at where we used to go to school, which is great. But she's like me. She likes a very kind of psychological, weird kind of stuff. So she decides we're going to do a thing based on a murderer who kills based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And it was just supposed to be like a little sequence, like a dream sequence showing like the body and stuff. And we were like, okay, okay. So you have this massive fake coffin that was built that we had to carry down the public high street to bring to the woods to film in. Uh, we had decorated all the stuff like cobwebs, like burnt stuffed animals and stuff to like really, really look the part. And then we just started to, uh, we like in fake blood, put happy, like happy ending on the tree. Uh, like, and even like started like putting bloody handprints. We start filming a group of, 
school kids walk by, led by their teacher, and they must have been about year ones. Oh. Down a public path, staring at us. Thank God the camera was set up. But the worst thing was, this little girl waves at us. One of my friends goes to wave back. Her hand's covered in blood. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and I was literally just there like, oh my God, this is happening. I was like, okay. <laughs> You're just there thinking to yourself, we are going to get arrested. <laughs> Don't. I really thought we were. This old man comes by with his dog and he's staren at us, like literally looking at his phone. And I'm thinking, please don't call the police. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, I swear. Like, I've never, I have never had a moment where like the police have been involved. But it's like, if I did, I'd just be there and like, lads, get the gear. We're running. <laughs> That'd be me. I'd be just like, screw the film. We're running. <laughs> exactly. Oh, on, honestly, I've had so many close calls where not even things, not with stuff I've done, just with films I've been involved in where I'm scared <laughs> the police are going to be there. Like literally, one of one of my mates, he I had to play like this kind of gangster for him in this big, big project he was doing, like to help him like get into uni at the time. Right. I think it was that. Oh, and. He, he lived by mine and he'd booked like the theatre that uh, that for us to go film in. And I was like, okay, cool. So I go to meet him by his house and we pop into the shops just to get a drink. And as we're walking back, he's got this massive duffel bag with him. And I think it's just the equipment. And I go, oh, is the camera stuff heavy? He went, oh, it's not the camera stuff. And I go, oh, what's in there? He looks at me and goes, oh, guns. Oh. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, but those like fake prop guns, like, you know, he's spray paint and stuff to look the part. And I just went, your bag's slightly open, you realise that. And to get to the theatre, we need to walk past our police station. Oh, And honestly, he went, no, it's okay, I got the script in there. And I went, yeah, but did you have anything to show, like, footage or something when you're on my phone? I went, okay, okay, then. <laughs> it's at that moment you realise, well, if they stop us, I'm running. <laughs> exactly. I was just like, if he drops a bag and the bag opens, I am not with him. <laughs> Oh, uh, like, oh, uh, the like, thank, thank, thankfully, has anything happened since then, or has it it's been okay since? Has it? Yeah, everything, everything's been fine. Uh, we've had no police incidents, thank, thank Christ. Uh, I think, like, the closest thing we've had to an injury happened was uh when I was filming with Luke. Uh, literally, we stopped filming uh because it started pouring down with rain. We were in a set and he goes, Oh, do me a just just go go to go sit in the TARDIS while I just take get some of the stuff sit in the uh, ready. <laughs> yeah, which I thought, one, well that's a sentence I didn't think I'd hear it casually, but I was like, okay. So I go to run out and so you got Luke's garden. It's got like the grass and then like the kind of stone pavement. I step onto the stone pavement, I slip and fall right on my backside. Oh. And Luke Luke eventually walks back into the TARDIS just to see me there rubbing my backside. And he goes, Should I be worried? I went, I may have just tripped a little bit. <laughs> oh. To be fair, like it's like you're rubbing your back. Like, you gotta imagine, like to touch the person, I'm rubbing my back in the TARDIS. <laughs> Uh, that was it. I just thought I'm just there, like rubbing me backside. Like Luke walks in and he's really confused. He just went, "Why are you rubbing your butt?" And I just went, "I tripped." <laughs> and the TARDIS makes me feel better. It's the, the TARDIS. The TARDIS is healing property. <laughs> oh, I was such a kid in that TARDIS. Literally, he. Li- I'm saying, moment... like, is that was that the rebuilt one that he that he had out at the time? Because I know he. I know unfortunately he had to rebuild it due to coro- I think it's wood rot or something. Is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was that. Yeah, I think that was the one he had, had rebuilt at that point. And I remember I walked into it, and uh, I think him and Meg had to go grab something. So I was just left alone in the TARDIS, <laughs> and then my mind went, "This is the first time you've ever like been in Luke's house. This is the first time you've been in this TARDIS. I should be polite. I should be calm. I'm about to go run around and press all the buttons." <laughs> It's like they've left you alone. I think they left you alone for a reason. They're like, let's just let him get it all out. Let's just let him get all of his excitement out in this console. I did. I did have that once before. Uh, I. I mean, the excitement never goes. At one point, uh, about I had to come back and do some extra bits for like Eternal Darkness that we had to like reshoot or something, and I was like, that's fine. I come back down and. Uh, at one point, Luke leaves, and it's just me and Meg walking to the TARDIS. And I run in, and I start like talking proper doctor, like, "Right then, where do you want to go? The past, the present, the future, alien planets. Where do you want to go?" Oh. Just, oh. I'm such a kid when it comes to it, but it's honestly so hard not to be every time I'm in that set. Like, I think honestly, I like, I know, like, from the outset, obviously, it looks, it does look like a very professional, like pro- professional but fun, like thing. I'm just thinking, you, Luke. Um, 
Dom and Dan and even if he's been there, um, I, I can't remember. Um, I'm I'm so bad for for names, but Overton Audios. Um, oh, Connor and Connor, yeah. yes, Connor Cadger. Yeah, it, like if he's been there, it's like I imagine anyone he like, especially anyone outside, would just run around that thing and just start pressing the buttons. <laughs> it's like we're off the mares. <laughs> Honestly, it's such an easy set to play. And I remember uh, when Michael uh, came in to play Ned. Obviously, I wasn't there, I think. Uh, but uh, he, I remember literally him just sending me a picture going, I'm in that hardest. And I was just like, yep, it happens to us all. <laughs> uh, and I think my favorite, I think it's just the thing. It is, it is a very fun set to be on. But it's, it's quite, it is quite funny because uh, obviously I wasn't there for any of the scenes with between me and Chloe in Eternal Darkness because trains are a nightmare especially when they decide to cancel on you uh so uh every because obviously she wasn't there i had to be like looking into the distance and you just have like luke in the background just making faces at me <laughs> so i'd be like i'm giving this big speech saying it's really not easy you know just trying to move on and stuff and i just look over and luke's just there in the background like hi yeah, i'm just thinking you know like oh my, like that emo- that must be like that's one of those emotional scenes like very kind of like you know it's in the, your dark it's a dark depressing kind of thing and then you're just thinking now i'm thinking oh christ that was just luke on the other side of <laughs> and Honestly, you're trying to keep your cool like <laughs> so many takes like that like our first scene together in the tardis uh when me and him are just uh talking to one another because obviously it keeps cutting between a shot of me and a shot of luke every time it's a shot on me luke's just fully like faces at me <laughs> or trying not to laugh because i don't know what it is when we're together we can't help but sort of laugh because that scene where i call him tiny and tell him to grow up he improvised i think one of us suggested the idea of him going on his tiptoes to like get mad at me and when he did that i we both just lost it <laughs> uh i think like that shows you have good chemistry then like you know you two can play off each other like as you know like like how john Pertry and patrick Troughton did you know it's very good that's very good man. that was it and uh, i think that that was quite fun and uh, it's why like me and dom keep talking saying we want to do a crossover which oh, that is was... now even funnier because i didn't realize there's a big ship between my doctor and his doctor <laughs> A ship. Oh my god. Oh my god. Literally, I uh was it? It's on the dot two it's on DW twelve meme page. I put name your favourite ships and I I'm shipped with the little red doctor, I'm shipped with the purple doctor, I'm shipped with the stick that I sniff in the town dark. I, I know that I know I, I've heard of the stick the stick has become a very prominent thing with your doctor, but I mean I the uh, thing is if this was finished, uh, you would have had an audio series with that stick by now. <laughs> the thing is, that stick would have had its own spin-off. Oh, yeah, of course. The stick, remember, Adventures uh, in Space and Time. <laughs> I, I kept begging Luke uh, to have, uh, like I said, forget Charlie. I want the blonde doctor to have Benny from Doctor Who as the companion, just so we can have like his wife in the background of every episode. Where's my Benny? <laughs> She comes back to she survived the event. <laughs> oh, just and I remember I said to him on a live stream once, and I felt so bad because the entire live stream just got filled with Benny, Benny, give the blonde doctor Benny. <laughs> oh, I feel like with that whole ship thing, I feel like it would just be like if I had to like if I had to like caption it, it'd just be if I did a character. I just I'm imagining like one of those kind of cartoon things where it's like they're they're showing that whole shipping thing with you guys are you're in a crowd. And it's just me, me, Dan, and Connor in the back, just face palming as the doctor. <laughs> we're all oh, just there, like, oh, we're next. <laughs> it honestly doesn't help that uh, me and Dom do not really, we don't really like turn the idea away when the ship happens. Because I remember <laughs> at one point I was on a live stream, so I mentioned the ship, and Dom's just sending me love hearts and winks. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, I was literally just like, oh my god, okay, <laughs> this is happening. It's like this is a thing, no? Oh no! <laughs> I was just like, wow, this is this is my life. This this is what it is now. I like, I will be remembered for being shipped with a stick, purple, <laughs> oh. bick or something, <laughs> whatever you, literally... whatever people do when they put two names together. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know what our ship's called. I mean, like. Me and Luke's an easy one. It's just little, little blonde. Yeah, and then when it's, I don't know. There's not really been a nickname given to yourself or, like Dom. Yes, I think, I think Dan's got the Irish one. 
and then whatever one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just a blonde one, which was hilarious because literally I remember when I first came onto uh, screen because obviously when uh, YouTube videos primary it's showing like the live chat and everyone was going, oh my god, it's a ginger doctor, and I'm thinking it's literally in the name of the marketing, <laughs> it's blonde doctor. <laughs> You're just there like, am I ginger? <laughs> literally, the, oh, don't a mate, a mate of mine at work likes to tease me because if my hair goes dark in certain lightings, it will look ginger. So my mate goes to me, "You're such, you're such a typical Irish person." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Oh, you're ginger." I went, "What the hell are you on about?" I said, "I'm blonde." To the point, he got everyone at my workplace coming down to look at me just to see of my hair color. It's like this massive thing at work. So I, I thought to myself, "Thank God he's not watching this live. I do not need him to see this comment." <laughs> oh, I think when an Irish like. Like, to be fair, as an like, I'll say this right: as an Irish doctor, you have the given ability to literally just com- like, you can complain about anything. Just literally be so chill, but you can complain about whatever you want. You have <laughs> this aura I mean. around you. <laughs> uh, see that? That's what I mean. It's just I feel my Irish side is just laying dormant in me. I feel like, and I feel like yeah. me and like if if I ever did a thing with Dan, like I would just be like. Come over here, Bland. You, you you have a bit of Irish in there. Well, I know it. I I think I think that's that's a collaboration waiting to happen between you and me. Just right, Bland. I'm going to teach you how to embrace your Irish side. It's like what we need. What we need is a pub. <laughs> oh, don't. And oh, uh, what we need is a pub and a lot of things to complain about. <laughs> we you go whizzing around the universe for five minutes and come back and tell me. <laughs> Right, we found the pub. Let's go talk about Gallifrey politics. That will get you on what? Oh, oh my God! For Christ's sake, he had to go in that black hole and make Rassilon egotist. <laughs> we told him not to, but did he listen? Did he feck? <laughs> did he what? <laughs> oh, oh, oh uh, To be fair, uh, if you ever do come down, no, like that would be a funny scene to do. Just the two of us, we meet up in a pub and just talk about. <laughs> Just be like, if that ever no happens, it's just us talking about Gallifrey and politics and other stuff. <laughs> if that ever happens, definitely. But I think what we need to do then make it feel dramatic, just have all the like dramatic shots of just like, us like taking a point, like the Murray Gold music screaming in the background. So you go, like, what drink will we have? Oh, I'll have a Guinness. Dun, 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 <laughs> Give me a Guinness, <laughs> give him a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and literally just like when they go to ring the bell it's just like all right lads last call just like tens regeneration music starts playing <laughs> <laughs> oh it, and it would be like a really like guitar it'd be like a, you know like one of those kind of a normal kind of wooden guitars it'd be just like a really, yeah so, <laughs> so he's just play like it'd be like i just the 12th doctor shows up playing it <laughs> I, to, to be fair, I've literally always had a dream of uh, wanting to film a scene in Ireland of just like the Doctor and his companion chasing an alien down the street with Rocky Road to Dublin playing. To be fair, that is, like Ireland is so spaced out, you could make that happen. <laughs> like, Honestly, I I've mean, not been there obviously so you've long. seen like Fall of the Doctor, that scene with I think Dan. Dan. Yeah, Dan Luke. Dan Luke, Meg, and. Um, I, I I feel bad. I feel I, I I'm sorry. I forget names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I know the scene you're talking Maggie, about. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's yeah. like it's like that. It like that one shot of Ireland. That's that's one of the many beautiful shots we can. <laughs> if you ever want to come over to film something, it's like just loads of different sh- locations to use, man. I swear. Oh, oh for sure. And see, I've not been to Ireland for God knows. I think nearly it must be coming on nearly ten years now. That I've not been to Ireland just in so long, so I'd love to go there, like to film, obviously. But yeah, just to go there again be great. Oh, it's like there's so many things. Like I mean, I've obviously I live here, so I've done nearly every, I've done nearly everything under the sun. But like when you're a newcomer coming in, it's like, oh yeah, you can go to this. We can go to this place. It's got this and this, and this happened here. <laughs> 
I, 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 this one memory, it's a childhood memory that's always stuck with me ever since I was a kid. I went to Ireland once uh, to go visit my relatives and it's one time I noticed my dad really lets his accent out <laughs> when we're in Ireland. He, he usually restrains it quite a bit right here, but when we're in Ireland, dear God, does he let it out, uh, which I found great. But at the time I was like, I was like, dad, why are you talking like that? Uh, it's the, it's it like was, this, this, uh, this weather is fecking awful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, we were in... It was when I used to collect Pokemon cards. I went into like I think there was a Smith's Toys down Smith's, there, and yeah. I couldn't, yeah, and, and I couldn't like find them. And there was like a kid holding them. I went, "I'll go ask this kid." And I went, "Excuse me, uh, where are the Pokemon cards?" And he looked so shocked by my accent. <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, what are you talking like that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I mean, to be fair, like I, I remember I went over to. I remember my first time going over to London in a long time, and I literally I went into a Forbidden Planet, and I think I asked, I was asking somebody, "Oh, here, where are the Doctor Who figures?" And he just looked at me and went, "What you say? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say?" And I went, uh, "Where are the Doctor Who figures?" <laughs> Oh, uh, I think. See, this is why I think I'd have an advantage working somewhere like that because obviously I've had I've had a couple of things at my job where I've had angry Irish people shouting down the phone to me, and you have like I I've had to take. Fully. <laughs> it's, it's it's okay, I understand. Uh, but it's a great thing where I'll have someone else will like be taking a call from them, cannot understand a word they're saying. I'll go over to help them out. I'll take the call and I'll be like, "Yep, yep, okay, no sir, it's this, no sir, it's that." Like instantly, like just talking back normally. They went. How the hell did you understand that? I went, I live with an Irishman, you get used to it. <laughs> oh, as to be fair, like, you're just, you're just, there, you're right, like, sometimes then you'll be around Danny, but like, like Dan's, there, Dan's there, and you're just like, I can completely get you. <laughs> oh, no, no offense, Dan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the fact, honestly, the fact that, like, I've not, I've not seen Dan a lot, I've chatted him a couple of times, like, through Messenger and stuff, and love, lovely always, guy, always, but. Oh, like shout out to Dan. He's just he is like I remember I had it. I like yourself. Like I had a loss in the family quite recently, and like mm. like yourself. Like I remember you sent me a message. Like he he sent me a message. Then it was just like oh thanks man, cheers. You know. Oh, honestly, he, he's he's an honest to god top bloke, and I think that what I found funny is. I I owned one of his possessions before I'd actually met him because he was saying like a Matt Smith figure on eBay. I bought it off him. And then I met him at a con once. He was like, "Oh, nice to meet you." And I was like, "Funny story." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you use this in a figure adventure once? Because I I have it all. <laughs> it was it was hilarious because like literally Luke introduced me to him instead of going, "This is George." He just went, "Oh, this is your past incarnation." He was like, "Oh, hello, past incarnation." I was like, "Hello." <laughs> It's one of those. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, but no, like he's just—he's a very lo- he's a lovely bloke. Like Jesus, like I—I I was like, like his stuff he's doing now. Like whether it's audios, whether it's visual stuff. Like he's—he's he's going fair. Like he's doing a lot. He's doing a lot of different things. He's got a talent. Like honestly, like some of the stuff the guy does, I'm just like, Oof. like I remember years ago, I, like I watched him back in 2011 when he used to, like to 2013 when he used to make like figure adventures, like myself. Yeah, and I'm just like to see him go from that and using like he was starting to use After Effects a lot, and I remember when he was doing it, he was kind of getting like you see his progression going like at a steadily fast rate. Like I understand completely why. At the beginning, when Luke was making his series, he got Dan to come in because Jesus, it was like seeing where he's come now to back then. It's like it's like yourself when you look back. It's like Jesus, like he's he's just come from just some like different place, like totally. On honestly, it's that, that's what I mean. Like, I I've got some of the Adobe stuff, and I need to start practicing with it, uh, but. It's one of these things that is great because I've also sort of got to see that with Luke because I remember when obviously Dan, God, God bless him, he was busy with uni and yeah, plus yeah. Deep fry, you know, trying to do effects work plus uni work. Uh, it's not a good combo. So Luke had to do some of the effects and I was sort of like watching. I remember I came around once and yeah, for, I, I saw the fall of the Doctor Regeneration before anyone else did because Luke showed me the rough draft, oh. which was... Which was which was so great because I remember I would see people when he was like posting a trailer. I could see people going, "I wonder what Dom's first lines will be." And I'm thinking, "I know what they are, but I won't say." Uh, oh, but it was I like rem- I remember the interview he did with um that guy Kai. Was it like um he's Red Chinny on Instagram or something? But he, yeah, he, he, Luke literally just was like, "Yeah, that scene was just emotional." 
on camera and behind the camera. <laughs> oh, I like. Oh, I I can imagine what it must be must feel like watching like the the rough draft of it like that you guys are showing it. It just it must be a surreal a surreal experience, you know. It, it was it was interesting because I know obviously obviously I don't feature in the movie, uh, yeah. So I I knew nothing really what was going on. Uh, so I I was down filming for Luke one day and he was uh say oh do you want to come take a look at some bits because we were taking a break and I was like yeah yeah I'd love to I'd love to and obviously a lot of stuff wasn't in context like. So the the funniest thing for me was the bit where Luke actually falls and you see him hit the ground. Yeah, I'd seen the rough draft before they actually edited like the transition of him falling. So it's just a still shot of the ground and suddenly, boom, Luke's there. <laughs> and I absolutely lost it. I couldn't stop laughing. And <laughs> like, oh, there he is. <laughs> I was like, there he is. I literally just literally just screamed, Timber! <laughs> Uh, but it was it was it was quite interesting watching the rough draft of regeneration and like because it was the majority of the scene was done I think besides like one or two effects so I was just there watching it and I remember looking over at Luke and Meg and they were still getting a bit emotional at this point. Oh, I mean, I can, which, ma- I can imagine because like I mean, you I know you haven't done it done it yet. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully he's still here. <laughs> They're all still here. They're not gone. But like, like to see like as. I'd say he's had a David Tennant moment or a Matt Smith moment or Peter Capaldi or whatever, where you've looked, you you know, it's it's kind of like seeing a character leave, I guess, you know? I think for him, because, like, I, I know, obviously, he joined with other fan film universes and, like, said, oh, you know, that's all be part of this one timeline. But, like, for him, he was the DW2012 Doctor. There was no other, other Doctor, because even before, like, the remaster, when you had, like... Uh, like you know, Ryan and Jay when he was like the oh, fake yeah, doctor the, and stuff. The, I know there's been so many things happening, yeah. Or whatever, but it's like to be fair, right now it's in a good place. Like it's definitely oh yeah, it's in a great right. place. Like like fair like fair play to the lads back in the day, but right now where it is, it's good. No, and exactly. It so. yourself, which is a good thing, isn't it? Well, you know, it's a bit of a bonus, but uh, yeah. it was one of these. It was one of these things where. Uh, uh, it, it just, it, I do, I did feel for him in the sense he's been the DW 2012 doctor. So to say, yeah, here's like the basically going to Dom, here's the keys to the TARDIS. Yeah. You, you can now do it. And like, to be fair, uh, like, I don't think you could have picked anyone better. I think Dom does an absolutely amazing job. And like, even though he's only had like the one episode, just knowing how enthusiastic he is, like, yeah. I did feel a bit guilty because for a while, I couldn't even tell Dom I was cast, even though at this oh. point, like, and I was with Dom in London one day because we were doing a cosplay shoot and he went, oh, I'd love to get you involved at some point. It'd be really good. You know, maybe, would, would you be up for it? Would you like to be involved? And I was just like, I couldn't, I didn't want to say no because I would want to work with him, but I can't. I just went, oh, you know, yeah, give me a message, man. That sounds great. And then, like, two days later, so I had a word with Luke and I was like, oh, yeah. And he went, oh. so you knew the whole time. I was like, yeah. To be fair, I think that's the thing. Like, I, I, like, I definitely know, like, obviously, if, you know, if you do filming with anyone else's, like, project, you have to be sworn into secrecy and trying to keep it under wraps as best as possible. <laughs> It unfortunately means anyone you work with, you can't tell them anything. <laughs> I, I think that was it, and because it, it, like only only a few people knew. Like the, the worst thing was having to keep it from my best mate, uh, which it, it's weird. It, I'm talking like I'm talking like I'm even a proper like BBC interview. Oh, you know, I had to keep it super ages even from my own parents. Uh, but I couldn't tell Michael until. Uh, but I remember just one day at LFCC, just Luke came up to me, was chatting to me, and went. Oh, have you told Michael? And I go, no. And he went, oh yeah, George is a doctor. And Luke, and Michael's just like, wait, what? <laughs> I think, like, to be fair though, it is a nice surprise when you find out your friend is going to be the doctor. It's like, damn, <laughs> you know. But like, like that's like that's a good feeling. And I guess, like, with like you know, when some like when you have to leave it, it's kind of like, I guess, like I've, I mean, I, I mean, we've all probably thought about it in our heads, like, how would our doctor regenerate or die or whatever and it's kind of like yeah it, it's like you think about it and you know you obviously have in your head for years you plan it you do it you film it whatever but then when you get to that scene that one scene where you have to you know just let go of the character and let go of all that thing all that kind of time and journey you've gone through to get there i guess for i guess for obviously luke it must have been it's just a surreal it's just crazy you know i mean no. 
No, exactly, because he basically built that universe for and that himself. Character so, and yeah, exactly. Uh, like we we did have a little joke, me and him, because when we were in the TARDIS at one point, and I went, "Oh, you'll kill us!" I jokingly threw my arms back and pretended to do like a regeneration, <laughs> and we were laughing, and he suddenly just went. Could you like imagine like we both made a joke? Cause you know, like in Doctor Who Confidential, when they do the regeneration, they'd always like show like like clips of like the the Doctor with like take that music playing in the background. <laughs> and I literally just said, yeah, you just have like loads of like multiple clips from Eternal Darkness being repeated. Never forget where you're coming from. <laughs> Imagine, imagine if he did that, and he like with a with a cover version or something, and just had your doctor actually pretend to regenerate. <laughs> just put a few, just put a little effect over you, and just <laughs> oh, oh, and just call God. and just say, and that's how we regenerated into me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I flicked the wrong switch. Like you just have it at the other end. Goodbye, my dear chaps. Hits the wrong switch. <laughs> <And that's... laughs> <laughs> oh god I'm pro- if he hears this now I can honestly imagine him writing that down going George hits wrong switch Luke if you're hearing this think about it <laughs> Luke <laughs> Luke no be, 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 be a good boy <laughs> oh uh, to be fair like that, that's just it's nice hearing the, all these stories man it's, it's, it's cool you know like I, I like I've never really had that kind of universe kind of thing whatever like do like do playing the doctor or whatever. So like, just hearing all that, it's it's just really lovely, man. Well, I mean, just I'm just throwing this out there. I'd always be happy to work with you. Honestly, I love I love the figure stuff you do. So if you ever need anyone to work with, I'd be happy. I'd happily work with you. Well, if that's just lending my voice. Uh, of course. I mean, look, man. I I go. <laughs> I always have a bit of um, ideas in my head. So, look, I mean, I'm thinking, obviously, with the lockdown stuff going on at the moment, I'm thinking maybe to avoid having to do visual stuff for a while, maybe do a audio, kind of audio series. Oh, uh, you know, honestly, if you ever need anyone, I'd be honestly happy to be involved with it. That'd be awesome. No problem. No, I'll, I'll definitely, no, I'll definitely consider, I'll definitely be considering you, man, because you're just great to talk to and have a great <laughs> laugh with it, you know, and, I I say like one thing we haven't touched on actually is like the figure customizing like you've you've been doing really good with that. Yeah, so that was something I'd wanted to do for a while, uh, because uh, I I kind of came to the realization uh, some figures just are not going to get released because they're just either too expensive to do or the character is too obscure. So you think it probably won't happen so i was a big fan of like batman march and i remember when he did like his his eighth doctor from dark oh, eyes yeah, yeah. like that bl- that blew my mind i was like oh my god i really i'd love something like that so gradually though the most i could do was a head swap and maybe a little repaint and just one day i thought now let's actually start trying a bit more and i kept like watching people like batman march just like when you go over some of his customs or like captain jimmy pie and stuff and just being part of the uh doctor who uh customs group on facebook's been quite good for me because obviously a lot of people are pretty like customs they've done like with the figures they use and stuff so it's a it, like in lockdown it's a great way to keep yourself busy and it's also just it's also just a load of fun and it also just does mean i get figures ready that uh probably won't get released i mean uh for example the derelict time controller like <laughs> that figure definitely unless unless character want to do a repaint that ain't happening <laughs> Oh, that time controller. I literally, my my mum literally looked at me the other day and went, why are you Googling plastic rings? Because I was intensely looking at the different sizes of plastic rings to try and make the time controller from the big finish stuff. And I was just like, oh God, this is going to be a journey. Oh, I think somebody has done it. So like, I think he has done it, but it's just like, how, how did you do it? It's, I think the issue, the, the one issue I sort of have with customs more is just the price because a lot of the figures are quite, especially those classic Daleks, are quite expensive to get hold of. So trying to do Dalek customs is can be quite difficult sometimes because price. Yeah, and I think the good news is obviously the B&M sets are coming out which have classic Daleks in them. So, oh, God bless them. I think, but I, I'll say this, this morning I will eBay religiously because I'm just a nut. I I just I take it religiously because I'm like oh, I might just buy a Derek or something. Or same. I, I, I don't blame you. I'm the same. <laughs> but uh, I looked on there and literally like I saw the new B and M sets and literally it is up to nearly sixty to seventy quid. <gasps> oh, no. And I'm like, you absolute scalper. You. 
I I don't. It's like I don't know who you are, but you're a scumbag. Uh, oh, honestly, we had we, I had a discussion with a mate about this because obviously because I customize an army build. Sometimes I will buy multiple B and M sets. But we were uh, and someone who who's not really a figure collector. He went to me. What's the difference? I said the difference is I use them so that I'm not I'm not do I'm not hoarding them just to sell for stupid prices. And it really, I think it really does annoy me, especially because. Uh, one thing I've noticed with the B&M sets, I do see like a lot of young children buying them uh, because, you know, it's Doctor Who. They think, oh, it's cool, especially like when you get like the monsters and stuff. So I do feel really bad for when you, they aren't able to get them because people like to keep scalping and getting so many and selling them for stupid prices. Yeah, and like, I think in that regard, it's like a kid, it, like, I remember when I was little now, like, I like when I was around 11 or 12, I got the... I think my mom got me the Matt Smith TARDIS, the exterior and the interior, because yeah. she'd she previously got me the 11 Doctors set over somewhere. Yeah. So I had all the Doctors up to that point, obviously. Yeah. So when I had that and then I had the I was like, this has made my day. Like, I don't even have a load of figures at this point, but I'm just like, this is, this is cool, you know? So it's, I don't know, it's... Actually, there's a funny, I'll, I'll give it just a little t- tangent. There's a funny story about, you know, the 11 Doctors Terrace exterior that with the black window? Yeah, yeah, that one, the original one, yeah. Yeah, the one that I think just, it sucked. <laughs> no offense. It just, sucked. compared to 10's, oh, one, it was like. Oh, yeah, I, like it looks good, but yeah, with the features and stuff, yeah, 10's one is way better. Yeah, I I literally, I remember the day I got it. I remember I was, I was running down, I had like, the sixth doctor in the TARDIS for some reason and I was going down to show my mom I think it was just you know like you're showing off your Doctor Who figures or whatever yeah. uh, ran, ran, to, ran to the stairs I had a Lego set out on the stairs I tripped and yeah <laughs> went forward over the like pretty much down the stairs held completely onto the TARDIS and when I hit and when I literally hit the floor crack I broke the TARDIS broke my, <laughs> my wrist oh so yeah, I can. To be fair, in any Doctor Who discussion, I can always say, "Yeah, the terrorist broke my wrist." <laughs> to be fair, I'm not going to lie to you. I I have I have a similar thing to that. It was uh, when, so it was last year in December. I was I got really ill, uh, and I remember I got up like I woke up like ridiculously in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning. Go to the toilet, come back, and all of a sudden I'm like, "Oh, I feel a little bit dizzy." Next the next thing I remember, I'm on the floor, and what brought me back to consciousness was because the Matt Swift TARDIS console had fallen onto my head and that's what woke me up and put me like kind of back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the only good thing about that place is uh, woke me up. <laughs> it's, honestly, it was the thing that was the weirdest moment because I, I had obviously when you got loads of collections on your shelf, you're going to hit stuff. So I fell and loads of stuff fell. I had cut myself like along my chest and on my arm from the fall. And I, I could film. I was like, it wasn't seriously bad, but I knew I was bleeding a bit and I knew I was like in pain. But my first reaction was, Oh God, is the TARDIS okay? <laughs> Do you feel, as a figure collector, you're just like, Oh, is that first? It's like <laughs> the, the value. <laughs> Have you ever had the moment where your your parents don't seem to understand how valuable some figures are? Because I've had moments before where my parents would be, like my little cousins would come over. They've not been so bad over like, the last few years, but a few years back, they'd be like, oh, why don't you go play in George's room? You can go play with his toys. And I'm thinking, don't you dare touch them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, literally. I, I've i recently, like, I mean, recently, you know, I've just bought like uh, a couple of like, uh, I bought a planet there, like the interrogator prime one with the dark eyes. Yeah, literally, and like a death there. Like, I don't know how I got it, but I got it. And I'm just like, no one, <laughs> it's like these are for filming or display. No one else, <laughs> no one else is gonna touch these. <laughs> oh, oh, someone who gets like, it. <laughs> it's like, oh no, like I remember my mom, you know, when like when COVID started and there was whole, this whole thing about dust dust kind of helps with COVID like dust of COVID travel or something yeah. she was literally there to me oh you gotta pack up your, all your collection in bags I'm like you're asking me to put there like with the little ice stalks that are breakable <laughs> into a plastic bag and put them in my wardrobe all scrunched together <laughs> yeah. I did this uh, four weeks later took them out took them out again because I was like yeah this, this is over I'm taking them all back out again and I look at my Dalek Supreme from the stone on her, and its eye stock is literally just hanging. I'm looking at it right now, it's hanging off. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, it's just, it's like, 
I have two choices: either buy a new one and repay and just do something with this one. And it's just like, oh, oh, it's it's a sad day, man. It's like I've had this, I've had that since twenty twelve. Oh, oh, I, I feel, honestly, I feel that that was. That was the Dav, you know, the the Davros set where you get. The, oh like, the yeah, the, yeah, I know which one you mean. The Derelict, the Tenth Doctor, Davros, and oh, I remember I got that in the the Who shop of all places. Oh, just I I honestly feel for you so badly there. I've I I've I've I had one of the uh, product Enterprise Daleks. Oh so no, like, not those. Ones. Like it was not the those. it was the Cushing TV movie one, and it was I loved it. But the issue is so. It, the first bit was my fault. We, I was moving house at the time, and it got it got a bit damaged. And I was, but my dad was like, "Okay, what I'll do? We won't pack it in a box. I'll just quickly super glue the eye stalk on, and we'll be all good." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, that sounds that sounds great." My cousin, as it's drying, decides to come up and knocks the Dalek. Off. Oh, how old was your cousin? She's a. Uh, to be fair, she's only about a year or two younger than me. <laughs> And I'm 23, so so literally at the time, like I was just there, like oh, what I love is my dad's not a collector, but he somehow gets invested in it because of me. Like he's just like, oh my god, he is he's a lifesaver when it came to hunting for B and M sets. But oh my god, just he he, I think he was more angry than I was. He's like, are you serious? Oh, I just super glued it for Christ's sake. Honestly. I say he's more, he's just like, I just wasted glue here. Honestly, it was, the, I think the, the moment that broke my heart the most is it wasn't even my figures. I went over to, I was babysitting my little cousins and they, they started to get into Doctor Who and they used to collect like, their dad would buy some figures and they'd have some that I didn't have. Uh, Cause I think, I think this is when classic sets were a little bit more available. So they weren't like that expensive at the time. So, and They'd be broken, heads be off, bits be missing, and in my mind I'm like, oh, and in my mind I'm just like, oh, oh, and they're like, hi George, they're like George, what's wrong? And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, uh, if it was like, if you're telling me there was like a brigadier from the Three Doctors that like had his like had his arm off, I would listen, just I'd cry because that's I consider it, like I have a brigadier figure, but I'm just like, if I just had that Three Doctors one, it's so just... I I had to hunt for that one so i do know your pain and that one i'm literally just like it's not moving it's not moving that's staying safe oh, i'm hunting i'm literally i'm on the hunt for like you know the eighth doctor from the children of revolution with derek alpha yep oh uh, i'm looking for that now i'm just i found one i'm hoping i'm hopefully gonna get it if i just get it now i have it it's in the collection and it's never going anywhere that's again. it that was me with dalek alpha because i was able to get the doctor but I was not able to get Alpha. And every time I'd be like bidding on like the set or something, I'd always get out bids. Sometimes only by like a quid, which would absolutely make me just lose it. But I uh, finally got it. And literally my mum was like, you're really holding that carefully. And I went, do you understand how expensive this Dalek is? Uh, they, they, like, no offence to them. They don't get, like they, some of them do not get how important these are. <laughs> Oh no! But just oh, honestly, the thing is, I think I'll give I will give my parents full credit. They've definitely gotten a lot more used to it now. Like especially my dad. But like I, I remember, like my mum was just there watching me at one point make customs, and she was like, "Oh, okay. So what are you doing? How are you doing this?" So like, fair play, fair play. They do. I think they just realised we're gonna have to live with a man child. We may as well just accept it. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much my my family is. <laughs> I think I think that's everyone, like any Doctor Who fan who just gets into it and just like is doing this stuff is like, well, there we go. That's it. <laughs> yep. Just uh, like first it was Star Wars. Now this just we, we can't win. First it was Back to the Future. No, it's, oh, no, it's this. Back to the Future's classic. I've thought I've actually I'll tell you, like speaking of dads who like take an interest, my dad actually did talk like I did talk to my dad about maybe like trying to save up for a DeLorean in the future like actually getting oh, one and just because in Ireland they're very more they're more common in Ireland because obviously they were built yeah. here so so for me it's like if I just got a hold of one and just kind of I want to turn it I was thinking about like obviously you will never get a working one that can go on the road yeah do it so it's like get one to be a show car so like for events conventions and all that stuff it's like That'd just be the dream. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Like, I don't drive. I've always said if I ever had the money, I would love to get, like, a little, like, Bessie, like, a replica of Bessie, like, to bring to conventions. 
Yeah, because like I, I just I told my mom like, look, I don't like like the only two cars I'm ever interested in is the Michael Keaton Batmobile or the Delorean. You are a man of class. Yes, that is such a good Batmobile. <laughs> it's like I, I just told my mom, if I ever get money, like a lot of money, I'm just converting a Chevy Corvette into into a 1989 Batmobile. That's <laughs> it. So, it's like I will get someone to get the fiberglass cast and just yeah. put it on top of the car. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I don't know. I just see that like I can't see myself driving anything else. <laughs> I I mean, but yeah, I think I think I, maybe that's why I decided I'm not gonna. I don't really want to drive because I'm like, if it can't be a TARDIS, Bessie, or a Batmobile, or even a DeLorean, I don't want it. Yeah, it's like that's what it is. I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this. I, my mum's just walked into the kitchen when I'm recording, and she's literally just heard me say this, and all I hear is just her going, "Geek." <laughs> she's not wrong. <laughs> it's like it's a way of life. Exactly. I didn't choose this life; it chose me. Yeah, like what is it? I think um, what is it? The I know a guy actually who you know you've heard of the Night Rider. I I like I don't. Oh, know, Kit! I don't what what the Kit? The car from Night Rider. Yeah, like this guy I know up in Dublin, like he does war machine cosplays and stuff, and he actually has the car, and he's actually been converting it all this time, and it just, oh man, oh. like he, it, it is beautiful. I'm like, I want to see when there's another convention next year. I want to see that car. It's like I want to see you drive up in that car and just roll up. Oh, <laughs> just, just oh, honestly, it's just it looks beautiful, man. I'm just like, that's that's why, you like that's like people don't get. It. The care is the drive, the driving point. Like, like one thing, just going on the subject of Batmobiles. Have you seen the new Robert Pattinson one? Yeah, it's very like I, I, I won't judge. Like, I won't judge it now till I've seen what it does in the film. But as it as it stands, it looks okay. Yeah. It's for a year it's one a like Batmobile. A for a year one Batmobile, I quite like it. Yeah, I think. I mean, obviously Keaton's one. Keaton was Bat. Like as they said, he's probably been Batman for a while. Yeah. And then when it comes to like Bale, Bale's one is basically just a tank. <laughs> it's just a tank. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have no clue. I don't, like I'll be honest with you. This is why I could never like get like one of the re like one of the things I have about Batman be Superman is the Batmobile. I just like I can understand Bale's one. I can understand Keaton's one. <laughs> That one, I don't even know what to describe. I don't even know what to call yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean, because, like, the the uh, male Batmobile makes sense because they're going for that realistic thing, so it does make sense with the way it looks. But I'm I'm quite a fan of the Batmobiles that either go to the extreme, like like the Keaton one, where it has like, the kind of bat features, or, to be honest, I think my favourite one might have to be the Batman, the animated series Batmobile. Oh, that with the grill. Yeah, oh. I, 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 because I do agree with some people. I do like it when it feels like a car, or they do like the Michael Keaton thing, just go like the full, full hog with it, and just make it look absolutely, absolutely stunning. Yeah, and I mean, like, I think with the like, for example, with the like with the animated series one, the Keaton one, and the Bale one, there was something about them that just sticks. It's not like for that version, like even the the, the Adam West one, like they all have a thing about them that you can just see. I can see it. Yeah, it's like there's a stylish feature about it, you know. Mm. I don't know. And I, I get what you mean though, because I'm I'm just I've, I had to bring up a picture of the uh, 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 what was it, the Affleck Batmobile, because I find a lot of the time they sort of just blend in sometimes some of the newer ones, and like it looks good, but it just doesn't have that big Batmobile feel to me. And that's that's the one thing I do kind of find a bit weird with the DCEU because some moments they go we're going to go really comic-y and the next they don't so it's that kind of weird tone and then there's just Shazam Shazam over in the corner just doing his own <laughs> oh like I, I do feel oh. sad sometimes when Brib not going to really get any more Ben Affleck because I think all things aside I do think he was a good Batman I do think he I did think he did a really good job I just I just wish he was given a bit more sometimes yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Henry Cavill more, a little more, because like he actually does like Superman. He loves, like, I think he loves Superman. Like he, because he, uh, he obviously said himself that he was a fan since he was a kid. And I'm like, oh, you poor man, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> because I'll be honest, I, I'm get, I'm getting Andrew Garfield by that's it. Like, I got into such a debate with someone once because, so, uh, in the Spider-Man films, the the Amazing Spider-Man films are probably my least favorite. But the thing is, I I cannot say I think they're awful. I will happily watch them. And when people say, oh, Andrew Garfield's bad in the role, I'm like, no, he is. He's brilliant. With, like, with what he's given, I think he does such a good job. Yeah, and I think, 
in his own in his own way, you gotta imagine this is a guy who wanted to be Spider Man since he was a kid. Like that's this is him living his dream. So in a weird way, you gotta go. Look, the movie could be what the movie could be trashed, but this man's living his dream. So I'm gonna like you can it. tell he's putting his effort into it, and like I think, I think it's such I think it's such a good performance, and I I really do love him in the role. Like the thing is, as, as much as from a like from a critical standpoint, there is, there's a lot I don't like about those movies on the whole. I can I can't I have to be honest. I have a really good time when I do watch them. Yeah, and I mean, like it's the same. It's like. I think with every Spider Man there's a sort of there's a bit of a fun energy because like with to- like with Toby there's the dramatics the the dramatics of like him being Spider Man and stuff like that and Uncle Ben. I mean not no no offense, nothing's ever gonna for me nothing's gonna top that Uncle oh, Ben. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And Yeah, and, and then and then with Tom then Tom Tom has that young, youthful energy which I can kind of vibe with and be like, Yeah, for the newer general like I can vibe with him, and also the newer generation, they love him. Yeah, so like, that's, that's the thing is, I think there's criticisms that can be made at any, like, Spider-Man, but I think at the end of the day, I think all of them do a good job in their own right. Like, I stick by the opinion. I don't think there's ever been a single Spider-Man movie that's been completely unwatchable. In fact, like, I've been watching the Japanese Spider-Man series, and it's one... Respect to oh, you, man. Honestly. Li- I've seen it. I've seen the Instagram story that you did, and I was like, this is the do du- Spider Man invented Power Rangers. We call it <laughs> exactly. I was just so I, I was reading one of the Spider Verse comics, and when he has like Leopard and like come out in the giant robot, I was like, oh, yes! I was so happy just to see it. And apparently, in Spider Verse Two, there's a big rumor that Japanese Spider Man will feature, and I'm like, oh dear God, please, please. Oh, I mean, they, they've been saying any Spider-Man coming, but I'm just like, we all just want to see the Japanese Spider-Man just come back. Because it's like, look, we all we ha- we know the hype that is there for Toby. We know the hype's there for Andrew, Tom especially. But we just want to see Japanese Spider-Man. Exactly. It'll be like the entire audience like freaking out. Like You'll hear like uh, Tom Holland's voice, like, hey, everyone. Everyone's like, oh, my God, yes. And then you'll just hear, like, Spider-Protector. And then I'll literally just be in the theater screaming, like, yes! Uh, I think the one Spider-Man that would get me, I'd actually tear up over, is the Christopher Daniel Barnes one from the 90s show. Oh. I think if I saw him, like, he's expressed interest. It's like seeing Keaton, like, come back as Batman, which is obviously a thing. No, if I saw, like, that Spider-Man come back, I think I'd just, I'd well up, man. I'd be just, that'd be the most... I don't know. It just it would make me just tear up. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Cause I I remember one thing clearly. I wasn't too into Spider Man when I was like a lot younger, just because I didn't really pay attention to TV a lot. Uh, but oh. I remember that would always be on. So my first kind of exposure to Spider Man was like the '90s animated series. So for me, for a while, that was Spider Man, and I still think to this day, because obviously with Disney Plus and stuff, uh, just. Yeah, his shows. Honestly, there, yeah. just getting to watch it because also my guru in terms of Spider Man knowledge is Michael Sega. Like he knows everything when it comes to it, and he said, and he, we were having a big talk once, and I remember he literally went on the hunt to go and like watch it once we were looking through like websites to find it because you know for a while there's no way you could watch it legally, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly, just I've never seen him so happy and just. Getting to properly sit down now, being the Spider Man fan that I am, and get to watch this show, I was just like, it's so good. That and Spectacular Spider Man, which needs another season. Oh, it does. I think, like, anime, the anime, like the 90s one, it works. I think people might say, oh, the animations, whatever. I, it might be that, but the story is just, it's so close to the comics that it's just perfect. And then Spectacular is like a younger version of that, but it's done in, like, Spectacular to me feels a lot more like character based. Like you actually, you see a, a progression. Like it's all one story in one episode, but then there's a long arc. To and it, you know? honest, and that, I agree. And I think that's what I like because I'm not. To be fair, some people say it got better as it went on. I don't know, but I Ultimate Spider Man on that end, I wasn't. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Uh, because oh. I, I feel they wrote Spider Man too much as Deadpool. So when it's you when the Deadpool episode happened, I thought, why didn't you just make an animated Deadpool? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, I'll give it to the guy who voiced Deadpool in that episode. I was like, dude, you could have just taken over the show from there. You could have yeah. just, just wait, just change the title, done whatever. There you go. 
Uh, I think they were meant to do an animated Deadpool series with uh, Donald Glover. Oh, that would have been that would have been great. But yeah, I heard I heard it got cancelled or they they didn't pick up on the idea, which is which is a shame because that would have been good. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's like when I saw Ultimate Swarm, I just felt it's like it's the same when I watched the newer one. Like when I've seen clips of the newer one that's out, I'm just like, you guys just like Disney. The whoever runs the shows the on that Disney one. They just don't get what Spider Man is. So, like, I'll be it's... honest. I've only ever I've only seen like one of the prequels for the newer one that got put on YouTube because my, my one yeah. of my mates he binged watched the series and I was talking to him about it and he basically said, "Oh yeah, they do Miles Morales, uh, like Spider Gwen, all this." And I went, "You mean over multiple series?" He went, "No, this is in the first series." I went, "You're joking me." So we don't even get like a full yeah. series of Peter Parker being Spider Man before you introduce like the others. I think the problem is as well is they put him in this like they do this with Lord like Lord of the New Star Wars and they put him in a science school with loads of different smart people. I'm like, the reason Peter was like the one to stand out is because he was a smart kid. Like I know to these days there's a lot of there are a lot of intelligent kids in schools and stuff, but with Peter he was in a you know he was in a school he was the odd one out like he like. He'd be, but he, but he was intelligent and he was able to do stuff. Like, like, like I think that's what works well in the Spider Verse film because even though they put Miles in this really like intelligent school, you have him being a character who doesn't want to be there because he doesn't want he wants to be at his old school. So that's where you get that kind of good dynamic. So it you still get that feel of him standing out even though you know he's on the same level of intelligence as everyone else at that school. Yeah, I like for him, he's just I could t- like you can tell in the first few moments when he's there, it's just like. Like when you see him leaving um, Brooklyn, is it Brooklyn? Yeah. He is? yeah, Brooklyn. He's there, like to all his buddies and stuff, and he's just like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" And they're all, and they're all like, "We're gonna miss you, man." And it's like, "Miss me? Oh damn!" <laughs> it's like he, you realize in those few moments, this guy, lo- this guy's a part of this world. Like, so to leave it and have to go into this one where everyone's kind of. No offense to all of them, obviously, but carbon copy. Yeah, yeah, because obviously we don't spend a lot of time with them, but you do get that impression that everyone's sort of like they've already got their groups, they've already got this, and that's why Miles has that kind of that issue. He's a street kid, like he he's not like his dad's a cop, and obviously that might have some pull. And his mom's a nurse, so that might have some pull for him. But he's like, I'm not like those kids, mom and dad. Like I. I want to be in my own circle or whatever. I know I can do better, but I'd like to do better. My way. From the ground. Yeah. And I guess that's the one thing his dad learns near the end of it a it's, little bit. To be honest, like, I'm, I don't cry a lot of films, but that one scene where Miles is like, tied up and it's that scene between him and his dad at the door uh, where his dad's like giving him that speech, oh, I see the spark in you, that scene makes me go because I just think it's such a good scene. To be fair, I just love everything about that movie. Oh, it's... I think... Like, I mean, for me, I, I definitely feel for, like, with Miles' story, I'm just like, this is definitely, like, for all the young kids today, like, to see, like, obviously we've had loads of Spider-Man origin stories or whatever and different takes and whatnot, but, like, to see this guy, like, I guess with some younger kids, this will be their Spider-Man. That's their, like, I know there are some kids out there now, even in Ireland, like, who, they look, they've seen the movie because you know it's directed towards yeah. kids a little bit, but they see it and they're just like, oh, I love my as a spider man, so cool because Peter's an older guy in that, so they wouldn't really gravitate towards him. Exactly, it appeals, it appeals like to the older fans because you've got like your Peter Parker in it, you can enjoy, but they oh, I laughed at Peter. I was like, Peter Parker is me, right? <laughs> yeah, now. I, I, I feel that just yeah, we, we're all just like, we're just washed up, just. <laughs> That's what we are. We're washed up Spider Man, just like all there in, in the burger joint, just jumping. Down. What was hilarious, right after watching that film, I did go and get a burger, like when I saw it in cinemas. So I just I suddenly kind of paused and went, oh, okay. <laughs> imagine, imagine, like, if you, like, if, like, if you, like, you, me, and whoever else who has a Spider Man suit, we're in a, it's like the pub, it's like we're all in a burger joint, we're all just chomping down on some, bur- <laughs> some burgers, and just saying, now, think of this universe as your universe. This chip is yours, and this crispy one is yours, my friend. <laughs> oh, just honest. And then they'd be like, Chip, we call ours fries, dude. <laughs> oh, just honestly, just I'm just thinking how much I love that film. On I adore into I think Into Spider Verse might be my favorite Spider Man film. Oh, 
much. It's like there's so much. Like the way it was made, there's just so much variety, and I just think, I don't know. I don't know. It'll. I don't even know. I'm just thinking. Will the second? Like I really want the second one to do well now. Like that's it's set a standard, and it's like it's just a perfect movie, and it's like just want the second one to be very good yeah well. do you ever get that where you really enjoy a film and you hear a sequel's being made as much as like oh my god I'm so excited you think oh dear god please be good please be good oh uh, I think that's I think I feel bad like I'm just thinking now like that's that's every Terminator fan when they ever whenever they hear a sequel <laughs> a sequel's being made that was I remember oh I remember what was it Dom Dom when he heard uh, Terminator Dark Fate was being made and he was just so excited and then like I think he, I think he did like he did sort of enjoy the film, but like I think every Terminator fan when that film came out was just like, yeah, oh Jesus. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's it's so many franchises are like that. I I think the thing is I think the first time I ever experienced that is when I was a little kid and the Ice Age. Oh, don't tell me it was Spider Man Three. Don't. Tell oh me. no, I actually and to this day I still like Spider Man Three. It is no way near as bad as people say it is. Yeah, it's a bit funny actually. Like they enjoy the comedic side of it, like mm, exactly. And I think to this day, it's the best way the Green Goblin's been handled in live action. Really? Uh, yeah, I think like Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Then when you got obviously, uh, oh god, James Franco. That's it. When you got him like being like the young Goblin, I think. Oh, so I think that's one of the best way Harry Osborn's been handled in live action because I'm not a big fan of how the Amazing Spider-Man Two handles him. Oh, that, oh, jeez. <laughs> I think, good actor, but literally when you're supposed to be like, oh, look, here's Peter and Harry, they're meant to be friends. They have, like, what, two, three scenes together, and, like, one of them's a fight. Like, one of them's, like, an argument with each other. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, it should be, if you want to do it, you're going to have to develop, that's going to take two movies, dude, not one. <laughs> exactly, that's that's why I think the Raimi trilogy had that really good advantage there. I oh, just I mean, From the moment he goes, I mean, to be fair to you, the mo- from the moment he said, like, you know, in the first movie, on my on my father's grave, Spider-Man will pay, I was like, oh, he paying. <laughs> He's going to pay. <laughs> Honestly, and being, like, at this point as a kid, I was only sort of aware of the... Uh, like animated series, so I wasn't used to. I was, I knew about Norman Osborn being the Green Goblin. I wasn't used to Harry being the bad guy. So when that happened, I was like, like little kid me is just like, why are they fighting? Spider Man's a good guy. Uh, but uh, what what sequel were you were you saying there before I got you off? Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I'm just, I think the one sequel as a kid, I started to realize, oh, sequels can be bad. Was the Ice Age movies because they got beaten like a dead horse that, that franchise. Uh, I think the second one. The second one was okay. It, like it was grand. Then the third one came along, and it was like, oh. Uh... Yeah. I mean, the one. I mean, the one franchise you can say kind of had a bit of a dip was Shrek. <laughs> well, run, oh, run the... Shrek three. Shrek two. Shrek two, Shrek two was like the Spider Man two because they were both released in the same year and they were just peak. Like... God tier. That's a god tier film. Yeah. Oh, uh, I remember like. That year, watching Spider Man Two, then go and watch Shrek. It was just like, this is the perfect, this is the perfect thing, isn't it? Uh, oh. I remember, I got, I remember, I had the Shrek DVD, and it had the little. Uh, you ever have that with the loading screen and donkeys just there, like Shrek Two? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, and then Shrek is down. Donkey, shut up. <laughs> Oh, just oh. yeah. But the the it's the thing is it's the one thing I do find funny is is just how I think Spider Man three sort of sort of become what the Star Wars prequels were. People hated them at first, but now they're loved and yeah, which I think is great. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think that's that's just good. Like if you can find something to enjoy in it and enjoy in a sequel, then look, fair play to you, you know. You're you're a better human being than me. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like I I like the what was it? I like the I like the Star Wars sequels, and a lot of people don't. And I can see why in a lot of ways. But it's yeah, it's it's quite a lot of me and my mates because some of us love them, some of us hate them. Uh, we're very much a agree to disagree kind of group. Yeah, it's look, it's the same. I think with me, it's like it's the same with the prequels and even the old trilogy. It's just like there are going to be some things that people like and dislike and whatever, and it's like. You just, it's there's you just gotta find enjoyment out of some parts of it, you know, as much as you can, really. Exactly, like Batman and Robin. Like I, I, there's there's a lot to enjoy. It's a fun movie. 
I mean, come on, you gotta like no nobody can say that the one liners aren't aren't forgettable, like you know, or or are forgettable, like I mean, exactly. what was it? Arnold Schwarzenegger going jumping in the room and going, "What killed the dinosaurs?" The ice <laughs> And I mean, everyone said, oh, it's not that memorable. I'm like, we all remember bat nipples. No one has ever forgotten the bat nipples. I mean, look, uh, rest in peace, George Schumacher. Uh, but at least the one thing he can have on his to- like, like on his resume is that I left you with that image. <laughs> I, I made sure you remember that image. I, I remember ages ago, I was thinking of Joe Schumacher and God rest his soul. I remember he uh, came out and apologised for Batman and Robin. And the thing is, at the end of the day, I kind of can't see why. It's it's such a fun film. Like, get a few mates around, watch it, have a crack. It's honestly such a, it's such a fun time. It's like, it's one of those movies where you can just take a shot. Like, just the... What are those like? Take a shot every time Batman does. <laughs> oh, take a shot every time Robin decides to have a random moan about poison ivy. Oh, uh, I think to be fair, you guys should try and do that for like the the fan film universe. Take a shot every time somebody does something. <laughs> oh god! Uh, take a shot every time Little Red's height gets mentioned. <laughs> Take a shot every time somebody calls you blondie. <laughs> Take a shot for every scene the blonde doctor isn't in. You'd be drunk very quickly. <laughs> Take, a sh- Take a shot when you realise how many episodes Dan's had already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just... Oh. Yeah, you'd be very drunk. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just... Oh, good Take a shot for every scene uh, Tommy's holding a biscuit tin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, they've heard that's like, uh, that, like I think taking a shot is just like the, one of the funniest games you can have because then you're just there at the end going, "What were we doing this for?" <laughs> oh, what was hilarious, and this is this is I. So I'm on medications that I can't really drink a lot. Like I can have a drink, but I can't, you know, get wasted. So the mm-hmm. funniest thing was we were playing that game. We were, I was playing like a drink game. It was like a try not to laugh challenge. And every time you laugh, you gotta take a drink. And obviously, all my mates are there like with their drink. I'm just there like with a can of Coke. So it's hilarious. It's like everyone's gradually getting more drunk. I'm just watching it unfold, and it was one of the funniest things just to watch. Like my friend just cradling a bottle of whiskey, like rocking back and forth. Oh, you have. Oh, me. I tell you, I've been like. I'm still in like uni. I've like I did two years at another college, and now I'm in this college, and it's like I'm I'm in it for four years. But it's like I'm in with all these first years, and they're all some of them are very young. Yeah. But there was this one guy. Literally, I was uh, I think this was before the lockdown kicked in, and literally, they were all. You ever played this game Kings, where literally you pour a lot of drinks into one, like one kind of a jug, and you like if you get a wrong thing on the king at the end. You have to drink the whole job. Oh, I've not played, but I have heard of it. I've watched it happen, yeah. yeah. Oh, this one guy, literally, he lost the game. And he just, he he was already so drunk because he'd taken so many drinks beforehand that, like, he literally just started chugging it and chugging it. And <laughs> the worst part was everyone started going, here, give me a drink, give me a drink. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they just said, uh, and he just, and he literally, he's cradling like like you, like your friend with the vodka. He's cradling it like a baby. <laughs> he's just like mine. Uh, God, honestly, I never thought I'd see my friend become Gollum, but he did. It's like the precious, they're gonna take the precious from me. <laughs> oh, it's just like when the, it's like when the drink kicks in, you just become a different person. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's 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 uh, like when the eighth doctor took the drink and became the war doctor. <laughs> What 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 uh, person shall I become today? It's on random. That's fine. <laughs> I won't I won't go into detail because it's it's very much a, a, his his story thing. But being the only sober one at a party when it's your mate getting drunk for the first time ever, it was and it was one of the funniest moments of my life because they don't remember things, but you remember everything. And the good thing is they don't know if what you're telling them is a lie. Oh, of course. <laughs> Oh, I think I went. I once went on like a really kind of a sober, a sober time because I remember I just, I think it was last year or something. I just said, oh, I'm just not going to drink for a while. Yeah. So I'm just literally sitting in the pub having like a Coke Zero while everyone around me is just getting absolutely hammered. <laughs> and it's, yeah, oh, it's, it's, as you, as you said before, it's the funniest thing ever. 
Oh, it just, uh, I mean, I'll never forget the time my parents came home drunk because they were like, there's a pub like right next to our house and they uh, they uh, just, they were going to meet up an old family friend. I went over to say hi for a bit. I come back, I'm chilling. Next minute I hear them come in and I can tell very quickly they're drunk. Uh, my parents come home drunk and it's fine. They're fine. They're adults. I'm not really an issue until... Like they are shaky. They are very shaky at this point. So I tell them to go sit down. I go upstairs to go scope to I was scrubbing my then girlfriend. And all of a sudden, I can hear the kettle boiling. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? And I shout down, I go, What are you guys doing? They're like making a cup of tea. And I run down. And my mum's like, I thought my, my girlfriend was like, What are you doing? And I'm like, playing parent. Because when you're like, when your dad can barely stand and he's holding boiling a boiling kettle full of water, I'm literally screaming, get in the sitting room, get in the sitting room right now, I'll do the drinks. <laughs> I do not trust you holding it. Oh, uh- it's in that moment you just like I have to say it. It's like save him, just save him. <laughs> Honestly, I the next morning I kicked in their bedroom door and screamed, "Wakey, wakey, drunkies!" <laughs> <laughs> they're just there, like, huh? Uh, see, that's why my dad. Like, I've never been properly drunk before in my life, and my dad says, "George, I know you can't really drink, but as an Irishman, I just want to see you drunk once, just to see what it, you're like." <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I think like if like I don't know if you if that day ever came, just send me a text. Just tell me how it went. <laughs> uh, uh, to be honest, I'll probably send you a video just going, Aiden, Aiden, I, I love you, mate. I, I love you so much. <laughs> I'll just, I'll send you a video back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. Uh, it'll just come up scene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, just just a little. Uh, you look at the screen, and then all of a sudden, the word just forms. <laughs> just like I think we should just stay friends. <laughs> it's like we're co- if we if we're taught if if we if we take this in for account as like doctors or something. Yeah, we're just incarnations of each other. We just we stay a couple of timelines away, <laughs> but we could be so much more. <laughs> So could so could David Tennant, but he but he, unfortunately that didn't happen. That leads to a lot of questions that the doctor ever dated themselves. Oh Jesus, don't give me that image. Like, like, that, that, I'm, that, pretty that, sure, I'm pretty sure somebody has done it out there, and what? it's probably one of the weirdest things ever. Oh, I yeah, I once stumbled across fan fiction that I didn't oh, no. I didn't realize was going to take a very un PG turn until very quickly on, where literally you have like it was. Clara, Romana, Sarah Jane, a few others there. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And literally the first, and I won't go into full detail, but literally Romana just turns to Clara and says, so have you sucked your doctors you know what yet? And I literally paused and went, and I'm coming out of this. Yeah, I think like, oh, uh, like I remember, what was it? I remember a while back. I'm just like, you know, when when series eight and nine was on and I remember on Twitter, I was oh, yeah, just scrolling through and all of a sudden I started seeing like, Oh, there's a ship for twelve and Cla- Clara, and I went, "Oh no!" <laughs> well, he's literally just went very, very like squinty when I saw like I just saw one where it was like, "Yep, this is uh, this has gotten sick for me. Uh, I'm not gonna look at this. <laughs> just yeah. Scroll away." Oh, because I was like, because for me, I'm just like, you know, even when she was with Eleven, I'm just like, when people were shipping out, I was like. Yeah, you do realize he's two, te- he's like 1,000, 2,000 years old, right? I mean, I'll never forget the time I accidentally saw the Doctor and Susan slash fiction, and I was like, nope, 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 no, nope. no, this no. does not exist, this does not exist, this is not happening. Wait, was this just to be clear, was this William Hartnell Doctor we're talking? I, I can't remember for the life of me. Oh, if if oh, that's just. I'm sorry, who who thinks of this stuff? <laughs> the thing is, it does make me think like. I'm I'm very open. If people want to write fan fiction, they can write fan fiction. But yeah, when yeah, someone's yeah. like, "Oh, let's ship this person with their granddaughter," I'm like, "Please don't." Yeah, it's just like you're violating it. No, you just violate. It. It's like I don't like it. You know what you should do? You should just dress up as your doctor, do a TikTok, and just say, "Yeah, there's my age. There's how old my doctor is. This is how old this person is. You see why it's uncomfortable now." <laughs> Just, hello, people of the universe. Please do me a favor. Please do not ship me with my granddaughter. <laughs> she is this age. I am this age. She is related to me. Truth looms or something. And that is what. We're, we're not, we're not going to touch the continuity of it because that's going to be a debate in itself. But still. Don't. 
Also, oh. any biological daughter that comes from me, like my daughter Jenny, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's it's. I still cannot go over to the stay how David Tennant's married uh, to Georgia. It's it's, it's both it's brilliant. Perfect. I, to be fair, I looked on Instagram. They're just like George, because obviously I follow you on George's Instagram. It's just that they're just a cute couple, like you know. Oh, that's hilarious! Like, it's great. Yeah, uh, it's just like poor, and to be fair, she George, she fully mocks him for being the doctor. <laughs> it's like, like when she, what is it? When she put up the picture of David wearing the, the costume again after so long, she's just like, oh, so what was that quarantine way? <laughs> oh, honestly, but I mean, to be fair, that's one hell of a way to keep it in the family. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> you get Peter Davison involved. Just. Oh my God. Just. I. I think. To be fair, I think whoever was in, like, if they, if it was a church they were in, imagine there, right? Imagine you're sitting down, and you you looked out, and like, obviously, David's worked with Peter before on Time Crash and all that. Yeah. But imagine, imagine being in that situation where you're up on on you know up on the pedestal, at, you know, in your in your groom thing, whatever. Yeah. And you look down, you see your bride, happy days. And you see next to her is her father, who also happens to be your previous incarnation. <laughs> you just must think, wow, my my father-in-law is Doctor Who, and I'm Doctor Who. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's one of those moments where you just go, I've inceptionized myself. <laughs> Honestly, it's just oh, oh, it's a hell it's of a just, moment. It's why, like, I don't know. It's just that is like I've just written my own fan fiction. <laughs> Oh dear God, he's living his fan. Oh, <laughs> oh, have you seen? Have you seen that convention video? It's someone goes to Peter Davison. Oh, what's the weirdest fan? Like weirdest thing a fan's ever given you? And someone just shouts out, "A grandkid." <laughs> and he's probably, and he just probably go back. Yes, <laughs> I he, I literally saw he just burst out laughing. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like I say, Peter Peter Davison's just looking at this kid, going, "You're going to be the doctor one day." Yes, you are. <laughs> Oh god! Uh, to be fair, he could like knowing knowing that fact, like knowing the whole like time lord's essence within the family. It's like, yeah, one of them is gonna end up as the doctor one day. It's just well, gonna happen. Well, sure. Maybe give it like ten years or so. It will happen somehow. Be, it will be one of them. It'll be either whoever decides to go into acting. It's just like, yeah, that that role is just waiting for them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it is. Um, um, God, God bless it. Just God bless it. Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, it's like the one thing that really got me nearly terrible was um, um, Tom Baker when he was talking about Elizabeth Sladen. Oh, yeah. No, that, that, that I mean, me. I have, um, I, I had a granddad who he's passed away now two years, but like when I, like, I look at Tom, like Tom is a man who's lived past, like obviously lived outlived a lot of his friends from the time mm. so when I see him I'm, I'm thinking that's like my grand how my granddad was like he outlived a lot of his friends and stuff and I guess for him maybe he's starting to feel his own like my granddad he's starting to feel his own mortality a little bit you get that because in, in a lot of uh, like behind the scenes documentaries or like commentaries I listen to he's very aware of it and he does bring it up quite a bit like he was doing an interview for the one of the blu-rays that came out and he he admitted he said you know who knows how much longer i have left and you know as, as there's been some like you're such a fan of him it's very hard to hear but th- th- that realization is quite hard yeah because he's like in his 80s now like and he's very i think he's still very self-aware of everything around him and he's still doing the audios fair play to him obviously but to see that like to see his honesty and just how he feels about himself at the moment it's just like wow you know, I mean, I, I, and he's, and he's even said in interviews, oh yeah, I completely take up the fact, take on the fact that I'm just going to be the doctor forever. Like, and he just goes, I am the doctor in real life. It's one of those things. It's what everyone's said, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to sound big headed, but because I'm going to put this more from Dominic's point of view. Because, uh, but when I've been around cons with Dom, I've noticed he gets a lot of that because of DW 2012. A lot of people going, "Oh my God, you're that, you're that purple doctor and stuff." And yeah, so and so just seeing what that's like for an internet scourge, imagine what it's like for like the proper series. Like no matter how much someone tries to distance himself, it's like Daniel Radcliffe will always be remembered as Harry Potter. Michael J. Fox will always be remembered as uh, Martin McFly it's just how it will happen yeah and I think but, but I think for one thing about Dom like Dom is like the when people see Dom as the doctor you got it like they have to realize as well he is a 
Like I've seen his other acting jobs and that, like that he does. And I'm just like he is a spectacular actor. Like he, he's he, a great actor and he's a, he's a great writer. When he did that remnants thing where oh. I played his his brother, like all of that, like that writing was him. And oh my god, like when I read that script, it was amazing. I can I can honestly not praise that enough. Yeah, and you see why? Like that's why when I like watched, like when I realized, obviously he wrote most of time for how time flies. I'm like. This guy is spectacular as a writer. Like you, like people have to give him more praise for that. You know, like when I went to, like when I meet him, I, you know, I ask, I, I mean, I've met him a couple of times at conventions, but like he just seems like just a genuine, lovely guy. Who he just like, and you just want to ask him, you know, how's he doing? And he just, I don't know, he's just a lovely person, and I want to see him get more credit for doing that stuff. You know, he is, and the thing is, because I, I went from being like just a fan of him to being someone who I consider quite a close friend. And it's, it's a very strange moment for me, but it's like, so I got to meet like what I say, cause he's, he's a very genuine person, but it's like, I've got to see like all, all sides of him, you know, when he's going through some hard times, he's going through happy times. And it's kind of very, it means a lot to go kind of go through that with him and get to like kind of know him as a real person. And what I can say is he's genuinely a very lovely guy. Yeah, and like I swear, every time, like I obviously you can confirm this, but like yeah. every time, like to anyone who's listening right now, hopefully still listening, but literally you meet when you meet Dom at a convention, he's always one hundred percent. Like he's the best person to talk to, and you just he's just lovely. He always gives a bit of his time to talk oh. to you and whatever, and it's just like hundred percent lovely person oh for sure like even even in a rush even like when he's in a rush somewhere i remember once we were having to run back to like a hotel or so he could catch a train or something and someone yeah, came up because yeah. they recognized him and even though he couldn't like obviously give like his full attention as you i know he would have liked to he still like you know addressed him you know shook their hand you know was as nice as anything and and I, I remember him and luke came up with a joke we were at lfcc once he was announced i wasn't announced but there's a picture of the three of us together, all with Sonics out, just in random cosplays as a little teaser. So, like, no one will ever actually know how relevant this image is right now. Jesus, is that image actually out there now somewhere? Uh, it might be on my Instagram. If not, I have it somewhere. I'll probably, I'll probably send it to you later. But I know, because I, I sent it to Luke the other day to say, oh, yeah, remember when we took this just to tease people? To be fair, we could just throw that out. Like, to be fair, if you want me let like, it, like if you want me to tease the the, the like the kind of uh, podcast later, I can just go. I'm do- I'm doing a podcast with one of these three. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally how like, they advertise Night of the Doctor. I just like John Hurt, uh, David, Hunt, Matt Smith, Roland Dave, the Doctor. But one of these doctors will be in Night of the Doctor. Can you guess which one? <laughs> <laughs> and there's just Paul McGann in the back, just like hi, <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, to be fair though, I like I'll be honest. When I saw that, like for the first time, I was just like, "What?" <laughs> like my, I'm gonna say this. I can imagine yourself. Your brain probably just went through the head, went through the roof of the house, and just off into space. <laughs> As a big Ape Doctor fanboy, I was. I remember this because I was actually in the middle of. Uh, I was in the middle of like my sixth form. I was just sat during a free period. Oh, and I was, I was, thought... I was, I'm the same. I was like, I was in a what we have here in Ireland called the junior sir it was like yeah it's not the biggest exam but it's a big a big exam year and it was just like to see like I can imagine you continue with your story there right? oh no, no it's, it's just the case of I was sat down uh during a free period just like on my laptop uh and all of a sudden they were like oh yeah no the doctor's been released and luckily nothing was put up it would literally just come out so I I clicked on it and I could hear the voice going I'm a doctor and I was like who the hell is that and I was like who could that be? It turns around, Paul McGann. I had to pause it and I screamed. And literally, <laughs> my mates, because they knew like the new series, they knew nothing, they weren't really into it. And they sort of looked at me and went, Are you okay? And I just went, I really want to explain to you why I'm so happy, but oh my God, it's going to take a long explanation to really explain to you how important this is. Yeah, I think like to anyone, even like, like even people who've watched, like, say, Chris, David, and Matt, it's like, or even Peter, it's like, you do not understand how important this guy is. <laughs> you do not understand why him being on a vi- in a visual story is so important. <laughs> and I remember I was like absolutely loving it. Then I suddenly dawned on me, oh my god, this is going to be here for a generation. But then when he was like, Charlie, Lucy, Keris, Tams, and Molly, I was literally like, Big Finish is canon! Yeah, and then he, uh, like, 
watching, like listening to him and Charlie. I recently listened to what was it, uh, Seasons of War and Embrace the Darkness. Yeah, um, honestly, dude, I'm gonna be saying this. Paul and like Paul and I can't India, remember. In, India Fisher, India Fisher, Jesus, man, it is like it is just some good stuff. Like, it, it, it's and like I know some people say, Oh, we stare with the oh, I stare with the Lucy here. I'm like, stare with Charlie or what? It's the so, thing is. I remember because my first Ave Doctor audio was a Lucy Miller one because I didn't really know about them. I was just in uh, Waterstones one day and it was yeah, just yeah. there. And I was like, oh, let's pick this up. It's an Ave Doctor thing. This sounds cool. And ironically, it was Death in Blackpool. So where Lucy leaves. So my first experience, because first I was like, wait, Sheridan Smith's in this? And I was like, wait, she's leaving? Uh, but then you have a... But then I went back because I, I decided because... I don't help myself. I decide I want to start collecting like the Ape Doctor and Charlie stuff like physically. Yeah. And I started like going through like I listened to Storm Morning and stuff, and oh my god, the two of them together is just so good. Can you agree with me though that you know the one with the Brigadier in it? The oh it's... yeah, Min- Minuet in Hell. Oh right, I'm gonna be honest, man. I remember listening to that while I was cleaning up the shed one day, and I was just like. This is creepy. <laughs> yeah, I was literally just like, "What the hell is going on here?" Uh, and I, I was like, "This would never happen on television." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, especially when the the way they describe what Charlie's wearing, I was just like, "Oh my!" I think the only story from A that I've listened to recently that I can definitely see being done like properly on screen, if they were to adapt it for the Eighth Doctor on screen, would definitely be Chimes of Midnight. Oh, yes. I mean, come on, man. If they had a year off and they just thought we need a Christmas special, that I, is... I'd be for that. I, I, I'd either want, like, I've always said if they were, because some people say they should do like a Netflix y kind of thing, like either with Paul McGann or Joe Martin. I'm like, either of them I would happily take. Oh, I think, like, if you like, if you were to do a playlist to sort of give people an idea of what Paul McGann's doctor is like, so then they can kind of decide for themselves what, you know, whether they want to see him or not. Shimes is the one, like, cause there's like there's so many moments with him, there's so many moments with Charlie, and it's like, oh. um, they have such a good dynamic, especially because I cannot remember for the life of me what the story's called, but it's the audio where it's just the two of them together. Like the episode is actually just the two of them. It's well, I think, not. I think that's after. Uh, I, I haven't listened to it yet. It's uh, Grace. Yeah, it's after that, and it literally the two of them, the entire episode just bouncing off each other. It's so good and one it shows you how brilliant they are as actors but it's also emotional because you know charlie like charlie was like before rose like the first one said oh i love you doctor and stuff and just it's heartbreaking and how well it's handled yeah because like i think mcgann's doctor like even though seven was the one who i really think it was the darkest one of them <laughs> like if if any doctor was to go down the dark road and just become the valiard seven was the man <laughs> seven oh, would yeah. have kicked the valiard and just gone i'm here now <laughs> But um, Ace definitely had like some dark quality. Like it was, you people always say, "Oh, he's a romantic doctor." I'm like, "Yeah, but there's some dark bits about it. You don't know." That he's... <laughs> he's the one. I've always just the, like the way I've described the Ape Doctor when he's mad is the way I describe my dad. It's the way like my dad's a chill dude. He he's very calm. But if well, he very, ever gets to Irish the feature, I'll tell you that. Much. But if he ever gets to the point where he's mad, like if he's ever like raised his voice or something, that's when I know I'm like, oh damn, I'm in trouble. And that's like the same like with Paul McGann's Doctor. If that boy gets angry, I'm like, oh, okay, someone's messed up. Yeah, because like with it, with it, you find that he has a very chilled like. I remember I was watching, I was listening to Embrace the Darkness, and there's this scene. I, I you probably listened to it, like, uh, but hmm. it's the one with the kind of darkness creatures or something, and they they take your eyes or something. Or, oh yes, yes, yeah. And there's that bit where he's taking the the dead child back to the the one that the ones where after he's found out they're actually good people, and he takes it back to him, and he's like. You know, he is literally there. Like, I want to be punished for this. I've done. Like, I wasn't. I didn't kill this guy per this child per se, but I feel responsibility. And I'm like, that is the doctor fully. Like that, like, like I love all all the rest of them, but like in that moment, like, Jesus, he was willing to like take punishment and just get killed straight away if you want, like, for this child. Like, oh, you yeah, know, I think that's why. If anything, I think Paul's my well, possibly my favorite doctor because I just think. Yeah, which is funny because a lot of people when I say that they they only know of obviously the, the TV movie so they don't get it. But when I say if you take the time and go and listen to like the big finish stuff, oh my god, just he's brilliant. 
I mean, when you listen to the when you listen to the big finish stuff, you realize why Paul is so respected by fans like who've listened to him because so much there, and it's like I mean, I've gotten nowhere near stranded. <laughs> I've I'm nowhere near that, but like where I'm at now, I'm just like I'm re- I'm already starting to realize this is why he's like he's so respected because all these different stories give you so many layers to him. So that by the, I mean, obviously. You, yourself well by the time you've listened to or seen Night of the Doctor you're like oh my god because yeah. I, I remember the, the story that broke me originally was when I listened to to the death and uh, it's oh, I, I've, I, I've heard that's I've heard that's a dark one like, I, w- I won't give spoilers the dark eyes, that's a, that's uh, a deep one. so obviously obviously because it's on the front cover you know the Daleks are in it I'll, I'll say this one line because it's not really a spoiler he, he goes to one of the Daleks he just says I once had the opportunity to avert your creation, but I failed. And he says, if you let me out your sight for even a second, I promise you I will not make that mistake again. And I was literally just like, oh, oh my God. Oh, I think, like, Paul, like, I think that, like, that line alone, like, one of those, like, when you have lines like that, you're like, this guy has never had a TV. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's like yourself. It's like, come on, baby. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, George. If, if I say if you don't get it, then you will. You might because you might. You and Paul might share something soon. <laughs> exactly. I'm the Paul McCann of TW Twenty Twelve. I might just be on audio. <laughs> I swear, they're just getting like if coronavirus has its way, no one's seen each other. <laughs> you should just send that to Luke and just be like. Luke, I'm like your palm again to your episode. What's, what's hilarious is because obviously I said my companions in the episode is called Charlie. Everyone was oh. like, "Wait, is he the Eighth Doctor?" And I was like, "I was even funnier." My waistcoat is from my Eighth Doctor cosplay. Yeah, I was not like because I actually have that waistcoat myself. I know you did because I remember. I remember like seeing when you go on TikTok, you had it on, and I was like, "Ah, good man, good man." And I was just like, "Yeah, he's probably picked that up. He knows exactly where that's from." <laughs> I was just like when I saw him doing Larkin, I was just like, "That's part of a night doctor kind of this guy?" <laughs> like two bits of that. It's the uh, scarf and the waistcoat because I was just like, I want to put some eighth doctor reference in. But yeah, there, there was uh, some people like, "Wait, is he meant to be the eighth doctor?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> it's like, trust me, he's not. <laughs> oh, it's it's kind of it's hard for some people when you do fan films because then there some of them think you're after a canon doctor or you're after somebody else's phantom doctor it's like it kind of gets confusing sometimes you know um, i think i think it, yeah it, it can be uh but you know i think the good things is obviously because there's so many references to other like fan films and luke stuff i think people get the idea of we are quite separate uh yeah. i think the only thing i've ever found hard is when i have had people go to me oh when's the new thing coming out when's the new thing coming out and i'm and, and like why is it make why isn't uh, luke making your series yet and i'm like i don't know I'm like, I'm like, look, it's 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 his thing. Just wait. Uh, I think the thing is, everyone who messages me, I'm, I will be perfectly honest. They are absolutely lovely. Oh, of I've, course. I've only had ever, I've only had one person that freaked me out was when they messaged me and said, "Hi, can you tell me Luke's address?" And I was like, oh, oh. and I was literally just like, yeah, no, you're not getting that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like that's just creepy. Then, like, that's just borderline. Like, that is bordering creepy. <laughs> yeah, or can you help me meet Meg? And I'm just literally just like. Uh, Look, no if you see them at cons, go say hi. Like they are, they are very approachable and they are very nice. I mean, but, yeah, they're very nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, unless you do something else, otherwise, say hello to New- Luke Newman's fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, 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 yeah, just you know, don't, don't be creepy. Be nice. But that's what I mean. The thing is, like, the enthusiasm. Uh, but obviously, when they're not being like, obviously, getting that one example. Uh, but when I've had other people like message me. You know, the enthusiasm, the fact that they want to see more, they want to know, like, when the next thing for Luke's coming out, the next thing for Dom, or the next thing for me is coming out. Like, it's 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 brilliant, that enthusiasm. It does mean a lot. It's just very hard sometimes to be able to, when I'm, I feel so bad saying, I don't actually know. I mean, like, I, like, with me, no, I just don't want to find, like, I'm just going to, like, I know, like, taking examples from, say, like, obviously taking a bit of inspiration from what Luke's done and what Dan's done is, like, I'm just going to do as much as I can do with my character. And if I think I'm just going to end it after six episodes and just say, and if anybody asks, is there going to be more? No, <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> my logic is have fun with it, you know, because I think 
especially with a fan film because uh, it's like it's like Luke said we, it's not something we get paid for uh, yeah. so I can confirm Luke does not pay me <laughs> uh, but oh, it's it's complete it's fine man <laughs> yeah, I know but you just, know, just I the, do this stuff myself I just get the headlines Luke paid. Newman doesn't pay cast members uh, <laughs> but no uh, he does buy me lunch though so fair play uh, oh, yeah. but he uh, what was it uh, obviously no, we don't do this for profit we don't do this for anything we do it for fun so you know it's a case of it's sort of like that gambling advert when the fun stops stop so that that's what i mean you know it's like we we're saying earlier it's, there's no point in beating a dead horse just for the sake of it yeah i mean because i think like when you love you know you when you know you love something a lot you just got to think just of how long could i potentially do it for and how well could i do it and it's like yeah, that's how long I want to do it. For. You think in your head and you work it out, and you're like, "Yeah, that's how long I want to do it for." Right. You know, because I because a few people have asked because uh, you know obviously because when Luke did the, the remaster, they went. I thought he was done with Little Red Doctor, and I went, "Yeah, it, it, it isn't. It isn't like he's he's taken that character up to, to many, as far as he he's can." Taken it to many different places, but like, so but this is him thinking. I because I know like obviously Nathan Carter's doing like a remaster of his stuff at the moment, yeah. some of his stuff, and that was Luke's intention. He sat there and was like, "I know I can do better now. I want to have this to match the other stuff." So that's why he went back and did it. And I mean, I'm yeah, more than grateful right, for that because right? I I wouldn't have happened otherwise. But yeah, yeah it's just mm. I think I think in a good way, like I can understand completely because look. I mean, you do have that stuff you you did years ago, which you know. Look, it might not be up to the standard now, and I understand. But look, like it's it's there. But then there, like you, if you have an opportunity to go back and maybe redo some things and maybe make them a bit better to fit in. Oh then... yeah, exactly. Like uh, I'll say this: like my first fan film, I have a script for a new version, which when this is all done, I will hopefully film uh but you know i'll still keep the original one up just to be like you know you can compare but like i get luke's reason he's like i've taken i've i've brought the little red doctor to the point i'm happy with now let's go back and just make sure everything else matches exactly i mean like I, uh, there was sort of um i think dan did the same thing he had a at the, what was it you know at that store yeah. I think it is. yeah he had a he had a pilot one before that like i remember i watched it back in 2050 i remember i was on a school trip I just like got the Wi-Fi out of the place on my phone and just watched Dan's whole <laughs> whole episode on that. Just <laughs> so like when he was like regenerating and going Calabunga, I was like, and all the lads were around me. I was like, oh yeah, I'm just watching some guy do Doctor Who. Guys. <laughs> I'm I'm like that. I used to do that a lot when I was in my A levels. I used to just watch fan films because for a while I used to just prefer watching fan films. Like people would do, so it would be great when someone would walk yes. in and be like. What are you watching? Yeah. I'm just like ah, uh... some Doctor Who stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I you know. I remember I once. I mean, even back further. I remember I watched what's his name, Thomas Reese. Oh was... yes, he was like one of the first people like, I ever watched him and Sebastian Bird. Oh, I remember like oh Tom, like his one. Like I think a little bit of his Doctor might have like had the inspiration for mine because I know his took a bit from the Tenth Doctor, but. There's something about the sort of intellectuality of his doctor that I just thought that's good. That's a good way to be about doctor. Just not too much overkill. Just a bit more kind of chillness, like a little bit of chill about what you do. You know. If I ever get the chance to meet him, I have to be honest with him and tell him that he is the reason that uh, I wear long leather jackets. His doctor was the reason because I used to just think, oh my god, that's so cool. And then I used to start wearing that. And it's going back to like I said, it's like working with Dom. I've I'm technically involved in something with Sebastian Bird because I'm involved in an audio series where I play Rassilon and he's been cast as Absalom Dark, the Dalek killer. And like, we've not spoken, like we've obviously spoken at cons, but you know, we don't interact in the thing, but just it's yeah. so weird saying, oh, I'm in a project with him and a guy who I used to watch for ages. Yeah. It's a, like, I think so, like Sebastian Bird did a lot, like did a lot of good Doctor Who stuff back in the day. Like it's, it's re like it's when you see him, it's just like, just that you just walk him and just want to say, look, I know you probably just moved on from it now and whatever, but I just want to tell you that was some good stuff you did back in the day. Like that's the, that's the reason why I'm doing mine now. Like No, exactly. And to, to, like, I, it was that and like him, Chris Thompson and stuff. Because before he was doing obviously Trout and he did he used to do a couple of fan films oh, and the ultimate. Oh damn, the ultimate conflict. Oh, damn. I 
just he went for a lot for that. I know, oh my god. Oh, I remember, I remember the the pain. The like, I'm gonna say this right. It literally was a conflict for him. Oh, like, 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 like that is the levels I think we all should strive for. Like as a fan filmmaker, you know. Exactly, because I've just because. I mean that, that's another thing I never thought I'd say that I can call Chris Thompson a mate and uh, so I've chatted to him a couple of times and just in case he, he, he watches he watches uh, listens to this uh, he, it's just been announced he's going to be a dad so congratulations oh, yeah, yeah, so-, so congratulations Chris mate Congratulations on the on the new baby man. That's that's fantastic. But, I saw that on Twitter. The, I think you probably seen it as well. The the picture. Yeah, was, uh, I was so because the guy deserves it. The guy deserves the good stuff, like the good, like some happiness. Yeah. But so I'm glad. I'm glad his. I'm glad he's in a happy place at the moment. That really is good to see. Uh, but I just remember talking to him once about it, and he was telling me, you know, how hard it was. And he says to me, "You have no clue how glad I am to have that behind me." And I think my favorite video is when he had finished filming it and it was just a video on his youtube channel of him just chucking the script up into the air i think like to be to see him go from like he did that made that whole film or whatever and like like just his happiness and whatever and like the fact now that he kind of worked with big finish and tom baker i think was yeah it yeah he did the comic adaptations if i'm right for big finish and he was in it with yeah. tom baker which it's great because I, I hope Big Finish use him more. Like obviously we don't know he might be in stuff he can't say. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to press the guy, but just it's just to see his happy to see him happy after all this time is just like this is it. This is part like this is perfect, you know. And it's just you just got to be happy for him. Yeah, know? exactly. And just to see how uh, like because the guy's talented. Like he's crazy. Oh, yeah. like, the thing is, he's a, he's a great actor in general. But then with like when you put his his voices into it, because the thing is, it's like I remember. Uh, I don't know if this will ever happen, and obviously it's been quite a while since we spoke about this. So I don't know if if it will come to about it. But we, me and me and Michael, were eventually planning to do a Spider Man series, and one day we we do pray we get to get it done. And I said. We, we both agreed the one person we'd love as uh, J- Joan Jameson was Chris Thompson. We thought he'd do such a good oh, job. Oh, yes. I wore it up to him once at a con. We were literally just passing each other, and I said it to him. And as, as I walk off, I just remember him screaming, I want pictures of Spider-Man! And me and Michael just turned and were, like, bowing, like, oh, my God, perfect. <laughs> it's like, you are our God. <laughs> oh, but he's, he's a oh. lovely bloke. So to see him, like, you know, getting to work with all these people and stuff like that and get involved in all these things, you know, obviously, you know, you know, the fact he's in that happy, happy like relationship at the moment, you're about to be a dad. That's that's brilliant to see. Yeah, and it's like, like the, as we just have, as I said before, where he's come from, and just it's just good man to see some people just in like to see some people who you knew in the past were in just some dark places, just have a really happy having happy moments happen to him right now. It's like that's good. Exactly. That is really, exactly. That's just that's just wholesome. That's love. That's wonderful. Like. Exactly, and then, and also just to see like him go from uh the like. You know, ima- imagine like you know he's you you know he was making fan films and obviously he did like the second Doctor audio series he did uh, for his YouTube channel, which was brilliant. And now like you get him like working with Big Finish and stuff, and you know getting to work with, like people like John Coleshaw and stuff. It's absolutely brilliant to see. Yeah, like that's like as as a fan, like as a fan of this show and like what it and what it is, like to be able to walk with like to be able to get to the point where you can walk with the people who have been a part of the show in some shape or form is just it's magical, man. It's a magical experience. No, it is. It's like I remember watching one of the uh Christmas specials and Dominic appears on TV to introduce it and I'm like, I know him. That's so cool. <laughs> oh yeah, and he was in full eleventh Doctor Retire. I think it was like Time of the Doctor or um was it Day of the Doctor or something. And I'm just like there he is. Yeah, I, I, I was just because it was a weird because I was watching that. I was watching it at my nan's house. I remember that. I think I think it was Doctor Mysterio. He was introducing. Like, I could be wrong. I can't remember. And then he just appears. And he's like, "Oh, it's Doctor Who on BBC One." And I was just like, "Wait, wait, I I know him." Ah, oh, no, that's a, that's just lo- like, that's that's just lovely. Like, and like for yourself, for yourself as well, man. To like see like in in your fitness journey, of course, like. I remember when you you put up the you were talking about it and stuff, and we obviously mentioned it before yeah. on this podcast. But like, I don't know. It's just like it's it's nice to see you at this point and just happy out, you know. So yeah, no, it is, and it is. It's one of these things. It's like, and it's also one of these things. I live. I get happy 
seeing like other people happy so it's like when i'm when i chat to dom uh, obviously about like the role and stuff and see how enthusiastic he is about playing the doctor or like another cosplay he's got coming up or how he's got this other idea of like for his youtube channel just seeing that enthusiasm and the fact like obviously like, he's in a he's in a happy relationship at the moment which is i mean obviously covid's an issue but the fact you know he's 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 he's, ma- he's making do and he's doing yeah. and he's just it's wonderful that's it all yeah exactly like at the, at the end of the day i it's easy to see all like the the dark stuff going on at the moment uh but yeah. i mean you know, you got i mean you know my i mean you know what happened to me like yeah recently. I've, had, I've had a dark i've definitely had a oh dark, no definitely a dark event happened in the family right right now but to be able like for me now i'm just thinking look if these guys were where they were and now they're where they are now and it's you know and look whatever happiness is whatever but like to know that there is a there is always a silver lining somewhere down that road road for you. It's like definitely just gotta keep that in mind. Because when you're you know? in a dark place, it's very very easy to just see there's no way out of it. But it, even if it takes a bit, there is always a way out of it. That you will there is always you know that that happier place just waiting for you. It's just a case of staying as strong as you can. And, you know, it's like I've always patient. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like I've always said. It's like. People are there for you as well. It's it's one thing I've all, I've I've had to learn, especially during like events last year that happened to me. I learned, you know, you really do know who you can count on. You know who you yeah. can rely on, and you know, even if you're in a dark place, you will get out of it. Uh, but it's yeah. just, and yeah. like, like honestly, man, like if you ever want to get send me a text or whatever, like no problem. Again, like it's like yourself, no problem. Like I swear to God. Oh, you likewise, know. man. Same to you. Any anything, just drop me a message. I'm always happy to talk. Yeah, and I think. Like you said, with like keeping happy, I think the one thing that's kept me happy is writing these little short story, like short audio stories about my doctor doing yeah. just crazy out of this world stuff. Just the where he's doing, just trying to save as many, like just being just a chill, happy guy, and just I guess the best. Uh, sometimes when you look at the doctor, you just gotta think, what's the best, you know, version of myself I can kind of dial up to 11 or whatever and just send them off on adventures and that, stuff that, you know? that's what i that's what i take to the role and it's it's one of these things because obviously when i uh uh i mean i, I remember because you you uh, did a reply to my tiktok when i did this i did a little message as the blonde doctors because i had quite a few people messaging me quite nervous about like, the whole covid19 situation and well, lockdown they were they were terrified and one i was just like wow i you know it, it's weird and these people are coming to you because there's someone because you you you're now someone that they trust, which it means a lot. So that's why I thought, right, what would the doctor say in this situation? What would Blondie actually say? And that's why I did that video. Because I mean, things are things aren't great at the moment, but they will they will get better. It's just a case of staying strong, sticking together, and yeah. Mm. And like I think that's that's like when I saw that, I was just like, oh, it was just re- it was just a great message to people and getting out there. And when I saw, it, I was just like. I have to do that for my own, like for for Ireland, of course, as the doc. Like I, you know, I, on TikTok as an Irish, like as you know, yeah. being in Ireland or whatever, I felt even if if one Irish person sees this and he's a fan of Doctor Who, seeing the doc a doctor telling them, "Look, this is how it is," you know, it is going to be, it's going to be okay, and. Just you know, as as I actually mentioned yourself, I was like, as Blandy, I said, saw that. Like, made, that made me chuckle. I like that. I was, uh, it's like what I was thinking to myself. I say Blondie in a very weird way. <laughs> it's like as Blondie said there. Like, Blondie said to me, he was like, "Oh, I remember this one time I was in the pub. I was with Blondie, <laughs> Little Red. Little Red was sitting over on the stool." <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, the way we've been talking this entire thing, that's going to happen. Just me and you will go to a pub, just dressed in full Doctor outfit. Yeah, I just let. I could think. <laughs> I could just, I could just see it. Like I could just see us, like in a very kind of old style Irish pub, just discussing just <laughs> anything and everything. Like, oh, 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 oh the, I swear, yeah, if you want to talk scripts later on, man, just send me a text. Yeah, for sure, Aiden. I, I really do hate to put this to an end, but I got to now get stuff uh, stuff set up for my mum's birthday party tomorrow. Oh no, it's no problem. Completely fine. And look. Fair play. Like, I'll just, could I ask you one more question? Yeah, of course, please. Go ahead. All right. So, I asked this to everyone at the end of the podcast, just uh, for a thing. It's what it, what would be your main goal? 
like it can be in life, it can be in anything really, you know, just anything you're doing. Honestly, my main goal in life is, and it's a bit cheesy, but it's just to be happy, just to be in a place where I'm happy, I'm doing something I like to do, and I'm in a good position. I think that's the best way to kind of view life, even if it's something small that makes you happy. If it makes you happy, do it. That's perfect, man. That's brilliant. And look, it's I'm gonna say it's been fantastic talking to you. It's been great to have you on the podcast. And honestly, same. Thank you so much. Honestly, I've had a great time. Oh uh, no problem, man. Look, I like obviously you're welcome back anytime. And obviously we will be we will be talking like off of, off of this, but it's just been great. So you guys can check George out on Instagram. I asked George. You can give me. You can give me the. Yeah. That there. Yeah, what was it? I think. It, I think it's just George Gradra cosplay. Yeah, and you can check him out on DW twenty twelve uh, Eternal Darkness as the blonde doctor. There's also an audio which is entitled Haircuts. There we go. Go check that out. He does very. He does a very good job at it. And yeah, it's just been great talking to you, man. So. This has been Type 40 slash Super Circuit slash Aiden with George, and we'll see you later. See you later. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye.